Ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to say that uh, I am joined by G2 Mickey, multiple LEC champion. He has collected hello. more shields than any other support. Welcome, Mickey. <laughs> How are you hello, doing? Hello. <laughs> yeah, it's going all right. A bit, a little bit sick in the last few days after the final, but I think I'm better now. So was, it, was it from, from partying or was it from, from content? No, I didn't go anywhere, but it's probably content because we had to do stuff outside with like not the most clothing. So, yeah. It was a bit cold. You gotta, you gotta pay the bills. We had this conversation. Have to yeah. pay the bills. Roman also says that you guys have a good understanding of what actually makes money. So, <laughs> gotta do yeah. that work. I assume it's like new MSI jersey, all that good stuff. But you, you, you are not allowed to spoil anything. Yeah, so. no, 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 no comments. <laughs> How many updates do you have now? Five. So usually after every like final, we have one or two days of content so now with the two days of content after and then now we have five days off and then we fly okay okay how like 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 looking at uh lec i come into the tier i imagine that you guys um you, you just take for granted that you would win right yeah you could say that did it did it feel how how, how did this win in particular feel to you the spring one um it was weird i mean i guess it was more relief that we managed to do it because we kind of failed last year okay and it also felt weird because i felt like the quality of the games was very bad okay so it didn't actually feel like we deserved it but i guess anything didn't deserve it either <laughs> <laughs> so i guess we won so that was like it felt a bit weird because like even though when we had such good leads we just kept like throwing it and like losing team fights like oh my god like no way we have to play for 10 more minutes of this game just because we like can't actually close out games Okay. And I think our level kind of went down, or like we weren't thinking too much about mid game and all that shit because we we're just focusing a lot on lane swapping. Mm. So all our focus went there. So then I think we kind of forgot about a lot of basic shit, like about waves and actually playing for them. And we just played for kills a lot. Okay. So that was, yeah, a bit, bit of a BG. But I think <laughs> we can probably pick it back up when we go bootcamp and play good teams. Okay. So, yeah, but overall, this giving winning the split was kind of an expectation. Yeah, so didn't feel like crazy, or like happy about it or whatever. It was just like nice. We didn't lose. <laughs> I see. I see. And we okay. denied. We denied other mid lines. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned relief. I, like I, yeah. I, I, I noticed. Like um, try to compare you guys to what you were doing previous year, and it, it seems that. Um, I, I feel like the game has developed in a way where like each individual player needs to judge information real time and understand what it means to gain information in terms of how you steal waves and how you push waves. Uh, essentially, yeah. like how you gain information around around mid and how you move with jungle and support is just to, to spot people and to leverage that to push sides quicker. I feel like this is something that you guys have sharpened a lot, at least pre pre lane swap. Uh, I talked yep. with Roman and he mentioned that you really, really pushed for, 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 for Duffman. Uh, is, is this his department? How has uh, been, how has been like the focus in terms of developing you guys uh, macro-wise in comparison to last year? How has that experience been for you this year? Yeah, well, that's true, yeah. I think, so last year, throughout the whole year, I think there was a lot of concepts that we just didn't really talk about because we didn't know, I guess, we were not aware of. Um, so then, I guess it was a bit lucky that we got eliminated at Worlds that early, and mm. Duff also was in C9, and he got eliminated early, and he had to stay over in Korea for his visa or something okay. for like the next year. And then he stayed over, and then we just lost, and then we went out for dinner, because either way, we were going to go to either Busan the next day, or we are going home. Okay. And then we said, let's go for dinner, and then at some point, I randomly just asked, yes, yeah, now we're both out, you want to go to like Japan or something, because Japan is pretty close, and okay. I never been to Japan. <laughs> So I was like, sure. So then we went to Japan, and then there we watched Worlds, and we, he was talking a lot about the game and like how he sees it. Mm. And I was like, wow, we actually never talk about these kind of things. And he was just like going through our games as well and showing me like how bad we actually were. But to me, it never occurred like how simple stuff that we're just like failing or not knowing is. Mm. So I was like, oh, if we get him, it's just like we're gonna actually be competitive, you know? We're only gonna just Go, go Worlds again and lose, because I think at that Worlds, even if we make it out of groups, I think we're going to instantly get knocked out again. Mm. Probably lose like to anyone, because we're just not good enough like fundamentally. 
Okay. Um, so yeah, with him coming in, he was focusing a lot on letting us know how to play mid late game mostly, um, how to play on waves, like which waves we should go on, how cheating waves, just like where to be at what point. Like he also helping me a lot to tell me where I'm like trolling, and with me he can be a bit more harsh because he knows <laughs> I will not take it like you know badly. Yeah, yeah. So he flames me quite a lot, so that helps. Um, and yeah, I think. So far, so good, yeah. No, okay, okay. No, that, that's, that, that's oh, yeah. super cool. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Because um, actually, during winter, when we started learning, like in December of bootcamp, it was like kind of like whatever. But then the more we played and the more presentations he made, because every day he made like a presentation about mm -hmm. stuff we were doing wrong and how we should do it. And then at some point, I felt like, because last year, a lot of our wins, I feel like, came from us being good in draft or like out drafting our opponents. But now this year, I feel like no matter what draft, we're gonna win just because we're better. So that's a good feeling to have compared to before. We we're like, oh, if we get this and this, we're probably gonna win. But if they oh, somehow like outdraft us, then it might be a rough one. Or like if we don't do like an early game explosion or something. But now I feel like we can always win the games. So that's much better. No, that makes makes sense. Like last year, I think um, like what I recollect mostly was uh, was you and Hans just like. Destroying ball lanes. It started off with like the Ash and the Heimerdingers, and then into yeah. Craven and Kalista, and then you guys went to to MSI, and some bands came your way. But you also had that one game where you had like a massive lead with the Draven against the Aphelios, I remember against Gen G. That's MSI, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. MSI, and mm. then moving into uh, the the World Championship, like you guys. E e even there, it's like the what what's talked about the most is like the N N NRG series, but even the games against. Uh, uh, Weibo and the other teams, those were very close steals. I remember like yeah. when you caught Jahu on mid with your Rakan. <laughs> the, I was the... playing with nameplates. I knew he would not react. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's good to hear. And, and I could see that improvement, especially when we played against you guys. I remember specifically, it's like you had guys had that game. We played against you guys. You had Kennen and like LB. Uh, yeah. or, uh, and uh, we just like... Nautilus. Trolled, we trolled like on one one time. We like moved into the wrong side. You instantly like swept towards. You were allowed to because you spotted us moving into top side. And then Cap stole one wave, and then we just kind of lost the whole map. And at the time, yeah. my boys, if if we weren't progressing, we would go crazy and we would just fucking throw our buttons yeah. on the first person we see. <laughs> but just just the nuance of uh, like everyone being aware of so, oh they moved into there. We need to move into here. And uh, and Caps can steal this wave, VB can push this wave. I feel like this is like the big difference because I think that you yeah. guys fell behind in a lot of the games that you've won. But mid to late game, it just seems like those mistakes are eventually going to occur uh, in in Europe. I had high hopes yeah. for Fnatic, but they they seem to also be very very messy in in their own yeah. way. They like going for kills as well. <laughs> this is someone you have to kill them. This this whole lane swap thing, right? Yeah. This lane swap thing. I don't know how much you can reveal, you know, I, as, as a spectator, right? It's like, I enjoy lane swaps, but there was, yeah. it was something that you guys forced uh, consistently. Uh, I don't know how much you can say, but is it a question of uh, scaring teams at MSI in some sense, or do you guys believe it's like the best strat, uh, Riot needs to nerf this, or how much can you s speak on this topic? Because I know Dylan loves mm. lane swaps. You come from an era of yeah. lane swaps back in 2016. We lane swapped yeah. so much. We lane swapping a lot, yeah. <laughs> I, remember, I remember one game in scrims where you la you role swapped and we lane swapped. And I was playing Nartop. I think you were playing, like, I don't know, you were playing support or some shit. Oh, Do you shit. remember that game? <laughs> Do you remember? I don't remember. I just remember I played Olaf once. Maybe it was the yeah. same series against Unicorns of Love. I, no, no, I, just like, I remember we were screaming, and I don't know who we were beating, but we were like stomping them. So then just last game, I think Kobe didn't want to play or something, and he just roll swapped in. And then I was playing <laughs> Nar top in a lane swap, and I have no idea what the fuck I was doing. I think, actually, Wunder's playing Thresh. You're playing, playing AD carry or something. Oh, shit. Yeah, that was funny. But uh, overall, the lane swaps, um, I mean, kind of got inspired by NIP, I guess, mm -hmm. um, when they did their thing. And Dylan was very happy about it, and BB wanted to try it as well, because... It just seemed like, you know, you could get a lot of, you basically get a uh, out of jail free card yeah, when yeah. you play like losing bottle matchups. So you just pick Jinx and it doesn't matter what support you pick because you're going to swap and then you're just going to outscale. So you just pick whatever is good for the game. doesn't matter if la what lane they pick because a lot of people start playing like bars, ash and all that. And they just can't yeah, lane yeah. until your jungle comes at some point and it's level one is unplayable and all that. So it's just like you go top, worst case, maybe you go like if they play it good, you're going to be like 1k down. 
but it's gonna be the same if you keep planning and you might as well die. <laughs> so we just kind of avoid that situation. But then after I was starting to do it against Virus Ash, they were like, huh, maybe we can do it against more things. Mm. And then at some point, we just always got leads <laughs> from lane swapping because people were so lost because it's a bunch of Zoomers. <laughs> <laughs> so they never played lane swaps. So everyone yeah, was yeah. making it easy. Everybody in the final as well, Oscar Rudin had zero clue what the fuck he was doing. Yeah, like if yeah. you watch the, the Zen game, I think it was game three, this guy was so lost on the map, it was crazy. Um, but yeah. I think that's kind of why we kept doing it. And I guess it also helps for MSI, yeah? that people actually have to look at these games and be like, oh shit, they can just do that. Unless they get changed, of course. But yeah, we'll see. No, it's, it's, it's interesting because I, like T1 ushered in this era of like really, really overdrafting for like winning lanes in, in, in bot. And you have to kind of think twice uh, about doing it because yeah. it's like at, at, at worst, there's like a mind game. Like I went back looking at uh, some of our lane swap games. I remember. Uh, like we played this game uh, where we played lane against Kogma Thresh. I think we had like bar, uh, maybe maybe it was a Vitality game, uh, 2016 versus H2K. Because I was like looking back at it, and it's like they were just sitting at the turret waiting, even though they put the, the three point wards. And like yeah. the big difference back then though was that people actually like shared XP when they cleared jungle together. So like top lane actually got <laughs> XP, and turrets yeah. were fucking paper because. Yeah, now, yeah. like, if multiple people hit turrets, right, they get more armor, right? In the past, it's like five people could just hit the turret and not give a shit. Like, there was uh, no, no no penalty for it, but... I guess now you can also get grubs. So then even if you're behind before, yeah, yeah. after five minutes, maybe you can get a hit in plates. That's fair too, yeah. That's, I guess, a different thing. And I guess before, there was also no sweepers from level one, if I remember correctly. I was looking at that. Yeah, I yeah. don't think so, right? There was, I was like, I you was... could upgrade the ward, like, with yeah. the purchase, yeah, yeah. I think, or some shit like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that was the thing where you just, like, you sweep, like, one spot, you can't, like, move. Lamas on top of you, and then you move oh, around. Yeah, before yeah, you just yeah. put on one spot and then swept. The fucking disco But also, ball. yeah, I was, <laughs> I was also watching our Splice Lane swap versus G2 back in 2016, when I was, when we were, like, doing some research. Yeah, yeah. I think we swapped against, was it Expect? He was playing GP, and we were playing like Caitlyn Karma, okay. most open lane, and we just fucking lane swapped. I don't know why, <laughs> but yeah, we played Caitlyn Karma, just lane swapped top, and sent the bush in the third bush, and just killed him when he came to lane. But we lost that game anyway, so whatever. <laughs> ah, <that's true. laughs> yeah. Unlucky. <laughs> yeah, I think good. he played like a pentakill or something in GP. That was fucked up. It was uh, an elegant solution to to our problem because I yeah. remember like early games. Our early games were, were quite uh, messy, but if we got They're to the point, game. the Void King would <laughs> carry on his <laughs> Cassidine. Uh, True, yeah. We would play like Fiora and greedy top laners, and it, it, yeah. it worked out somehow. It was, it was, it was, it was <laughs> I remember we played time. a lot of Mazahar GP Jin. That shit was OP. Uh, I was re watching her Best of Five or Zero when I was inting on Bart. Oh, no. shit. <laughs> I <Yeah>. remember this. <laughs> I don't know, you were quite nervous crazy. in this one, no? Like yeah, I was mega choking. The, the first time I saw you nervous, the pressure was on. It was like the H2K series first was time. fine. The H2K yeah, yeah. series, you, you were pretty crispy. I remember, was it, was it Freeze? Or it was Forgiven. It was Forgiven. Playing. It was yeah. Forgiven playing, yeah. Motherfuckers, they removed Lanesworth from the game the moment we... Yeah. I mean, we, we play against fucking Forgiven Grey and Bander, <laughs> the, <laughs> the but They were not, they were the not very good. Yeah. I think me and Kobe were like kind of pissing on them, if yeah, I remember yeah. correctly. I think there was one Tom Kench Terror game. I think it was like game four or something. We could have killed them level one, but I fucked up. But they were still getting fucked. Because <laughs> I was expecting it to be a bit harder, you know? <laughs> it's funny that you remember this. I just remember the detail about, like, like, Van, like uh, uh, Wunder played, like, two Irelia games, and then they refused to pick Nar in the series, even though it was, like, the most broken champ in the, in, in the game. So they just gave us five games of Nar. Oh, yeah, true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this shit. With Frozen Mallet, I think. Pretty much, yeah. I think it was Frozen yeah. Mallet, Black Cleaver, and then this champion just completely won me nine. <laughs> a bit too OP. Yeah, I was using old Stamp Kinch. That shit was broken. You, you, you mentioned like LEC level being lower. This is something that's been talked a, a, a lot about. I imagine you're not too much on social media, you don't give a fuck about the noise, but you mentioned it now, so I want to bring it up. Uh, yep. LEC level, what's going on? What's going on with the level in the LEC? Because some, some, some games just look very atrocious, you know? I don't know if you yep. saw, like, the Team Heretics versus uh, Fnatic, like that game one, like, Wunder died to the turret, and then Oscarine died to the turret, and it's, like, just a sequence of, of, of yep. mess. It's like, even Fnatic against you guys, a lot of the fights that were taken is, like, it, it just seemed like the moment an enemy was on the screen, they're going to fight with no, like, real idea of, 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 of position and hoping it kind of works out because those are some fucking bloody games. 
There was the yeah. meme about Hans Sama Flash, and then he fucking flashed for a pentakill <laughs> finally. But I'm, I'm rambling. Yeah. My main question is, what's going on with the LEC level? It's a good question. Um, I mean, I think it's not been good for a very long time. I okay. Think, um, yeah, let me think. Back to 2019, or actually... I mean, 2019, I think we were fine, but then I guess we had two good teams. Mm. And, I mean, we just were a bit more creative, I felt like. Uh, which I think we were just actually smarter about how to play the game. Like we actually played on Sidon a lot back in 2019. Okay. I think the more the meta evolved and the more teams shuffled around, like after 2020, I guess we split up. Then I guess the meta became to like just group projectives, maybe Jake or OP or something. Hmm. And people just started playing as that for that only and started grouping for every dragon, no matter what, just perma group. And just kept doing it, even if Drake's changed over time. So I feel like nowadays people are still just like, oh, Drake is spawning. Let's go fight it, no matter what. Okay. Um, but I think overall the level is probably lower because a lot of people get jailed and can't go to good teams. So then you can't build like an actual strong team. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, I think it also kind of is worse that we have not as many games as LPL, LCK, I think. Mm. They kind of play a lot more games during the regular splits. Or at least, I believe so. But that, that was the case for quite a while, yeah. That they actually yeah, displayed yeah. a lot more games. Um, I mean, I guess now we have three splits. So it's a lot better ones. We actually play three three days in a week. Mm. So that's that's better, right? It's still nice. But uh, yeah, still feels a bit less. Because usually I learn the most from stage games. Makes sense. Other yeah. than that, uh, solo queue is probably more shit. But uh, then again, it's probably gotten worse in... Korea as well compared to when I, if I remember when I was first time in Korea, it was really insane. Then mm. this time I went, it was still much better than Europe, but still worse than before. But yeah, I think maybe nowadays in Europe and maybe NA as well, there's just like a lot of streamers and personalities that play the game mostly for fun and people yeah, don't yeah. really play to win as much. And even with ERLs, people are just like happy being just fine in ERLs and not actually inspired to be the best in the world and actually win worlds they're just like oh i'm getting paid i'm gonna uh, sit at home and just play and get some money sounds good you know i think people are just not ambitious enough okay whereas i think in other regions especially china they always have like new up-and-coming talents and then you know they play have like ten thousand academies and all that and they just pull a player from anywhere yeah yeah but yeah I'm not sure how to fix that aspect because, especially like when Champions Q was a thing, mm -hmm. people just CBA playing it after like a week or two. Like, I don't know. I think just the mentality of Europe is a bit shit. Mm. Um, so, yeah, not sure how to change that. <laughs> just uh, try harder, guys. I don't know. <laughs> I, I feel like uh, from, from outside, you know, speaking with Roma and speaking to you and, you know, Having some, I, at least I like. I, obviously, you guys are, the, are are at the forefront of 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 the LEC. Uh, you've been for uh, for this year and, and and the previous year with this roster, right? I think like it 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 really. You you have an opportunity to 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 make people rethink by making people want to beat you, because I think yeah. twenty nineteen as an example, the fact that you guys were so good. And that we could actively scrim you and we wanted to pursue to beat you guys. I had the same impression back in 2018 when Fnatic was really fucking good. It's like having an adversary that in the region that is really fucking good. So it was the same for us in 2016, right? It's like we really wanted to beat G2. And uh, yep. we, we were inspired a lot by what they did. And when you're like slapped in the face by, by a higher standard, it becomes easier in some shape or form to, to chase it, you know? Um, yeah, and uh, I think that at least you guys are doing a good job of of, of trying to 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 set uh, like a different standard. It was the whole with uh, with Roma, like uh, uh, showing that people fucking cancel scrims and all that shit. I feel like that has made like yeah. a positive impact. You know, it's like um, it has made True. the the conversations uh, easier um, on 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 your end. Knowing like all of these issues that you mentioned, and you guys uh, like uh, fighting against that in some shape or form. How, how do you feel? Uh, and and let, let's not not how do you feel, but how does how how do you and 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 G two and the rest of the staff and the players how do you guys fight against this? Like how do you guys actively 
uh, improve? Like you mentioned, Duffman and his presentations. How do you fight against uh, the variables that uh, speak against you if you compare to LPL and the LCK? Mm, I mean, just in terms of actually trying your hardest, I think we have a very packed schedule, like a daily one. Mm -hmm. I don't think many teams have that. So, for example, we wake up, I don't know, 10.30, then we do exercise, maybe 30 minutes. Sometimes we have extra, like individual ones, if you want. Like I'm doing a bit and the Ike a bit. And then we have meeting at 12. Then we have uh, food, 12.30, 1 p.m. we scream to 4. Then from 4 to 5, we have one-on-one -on -one meetings with everyone, mm -hmm. like staff first player, like staff and players. Yeah, so yeah. We have five staff, we have five players, so it fits. And then we have three more games. And then after that, we do another meeting or like debrief for like 30 minutes. Um, then we also do breathing exercises in between, like 15 minutes a day. So that kind of adds up. So usually we're kind of done with the day around 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then we just also play a lot of solo queue. And yeah, I think a lot of teams don't really do as much. Usually people just go wake up one hour before scrims, do three three games, play solo game, play three games, and then call the day, you know. Just uh, everyone goes their separate ways and does whatever they want with their time. I mean, a lot of people still play solo queue, right? But... Mm. It's more the minority, I feel like. And a lot of teams, I f yeah, they just like, even if you play, for example, three games, you, they're very fast games, and you still have like one hour left until the break, I guess. There's like, oh, I want to play three games, so we can just call it here. Especially throughout to towards the evening, people just kind of stop, which yeah, yeah. I think is a bit pointless. Or just like, I just don't see how playing solo queue is more useful than playing scrims. Even if people get stomped or something, like, at least it's better. Like, you can still learn something. Mm. Um, otherwise, I don't know. Why, why, people, why are they even competing? <laughs> like, what's the point? <laughs> no, I think um, what you're saying makes a lot of sense. You know, I think, um, yeah. at least on our end, uh, I remember, like, in, in December, we tried to, to push evening blocks, but we couldn't get quality out of uh the, the the later end so it still was something that we wanted to build towards it's like you you want to yep. do everything with 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 a purpose and um you, you want to make sure that uh people are not just going through the motion of screaming just to get it over with right yeah and um i think that's that's a challenge that a lot of teams face because they struggle to make the day seem unique and let's say goal oriented uh in, yep. in, in a way that uh, is impactful because I think a lot of players just go through the motion and then they come into the weekend uh, not really you know walking away from practice with uh, anything else but oh I just did a couple of reps on on, on these champs and uh, they move yep. into into the weekend with with less done uh, definitely I think there's a habit of wanting to lean into excuses rather than fight against them it's like yep. it might be true that you're tired might be true that you're annoyed about something, but how much that affects you is still a, an, an, an active uh, choice. Because yep. I think when you fight against that, you build uh, some sort of a resilience that is super important because in the end, it's like you go to international events, you play tournaments, you don't know what the fuck is going to happen, right? Sometimes someone's sick, sometimes yep. something happens, sometimes, you know, the, the someone vacuums outside your hotel room, the food is shit <laughs> maybe, like you need to be ready for anything, like if that affects you and disrupts you in some yeah. way and um, you're not going to be able to perform it's it's kind of um, yeah kind of a bg <laughs> i agree with that yeah could have quarantine in china in 2020 that was the worst <laughs> talk to me about it i wasn't there i wasn't there oh my god this was my my sandbox uh sandbox year. Oh, yeah. so i was i was chilling i knew dama would fuck us all from playing them <laughs> and screaming them, I could have warned everybody. <laughs> yeah, 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 that was a bit of a disaster. Yeah. I've heard some stories, but tell me your version. <laughs> I mean, the thing was, I mean, I just like okay. So first of all, I don't like being alone, and two weeks alone was not very fun. Mm. And then the food was just like not great, you know. It was like airplane food, but not even warm or just like. I think the only thing I ate was Kit Kats. One one croissant? No, I didn't even eat the, I didn't even eat the chocolate or like okay. the cake. <laughs> I ate like one croissant in the morning that I mm. got. And then I was just spamming cup noodles for the whole day. But oh, at some point I ran out of cup noodles. So then I just had like a bunch of a bit of rice every time. 
So I just ate one croissant and some rice, and that was kind of it. I think I lost like five kilos maybe you know, during Holy the boot shit. <laughs> And it was funny that we, after that we went to buy suits because apparently in suits uh, in China you can get tailored suits way cheaper than anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. But the problem was I was five kilos lighter, so then oh, after shit. worlds didn't fit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and same same case for everyone that bought it. And I think it was like caps, no, not caps, Yankos, Perks, Duff, Grabs. Everyone bought it, I think. Is this oh, yeah. the the famous photo shoot, the G two photo shoot when you guys were in suits? Is, is that mm, from that? Because I remember possible, like there's some yeah. pictures when you yeah, guys in yeah, yeah. suits. That should look cool. one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no one fits in those anymore. I think. Nice. Maybe maybe Lucas still does. I don't know. No, I I, I, I heard the damn horror stories. Like I, I think I, I heard about like Nemesis suffering, like no, yeah. like borderline had to be get hospitalized. Plus rice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was absolutely yeah. horrible. Like uh, I guess, yeah. at least it's like I I had to quarantine when I flew into Korea because I joined Sandbox, right? But yep. like Sandbox just put me like in an apartment. I had like a I had like a Korean card so I could order any food I wanted. Oh, okay. And I gained a lot of kilos, bro. Like <laughs> after after Korea, I peaked. Like I was like I was like 115 <laughs> kilo, 120 kilo. It was a mess, man. It was not bad. <laughs> it was a, it was a complete uh, complete annihilation. I guess it was uh, it was a complete disaster. Uh, yeah. At least the hotel after was nice. So that was like. Like crazy night and day difference. Like eating warm food, I was like, "Wow, crazy." <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. I'm happy that shit. Uh, that shit is over. There's, yeah. there's no quarantine, nothing. You guys are just gonna. You gonna. You guys yeah. gonna fly out to Korea first, or what's the plan? No, no, we just go China. I think. Okay, right so, so right, right. It's hooking you guys up. You get the the right China treatment. Nice hotels, mm. nice PCs. Good question. I'm not sure you have to ask me. <laughs> I wonder. I guess you guys are gonna I think play it's on the G2 setting up something. Okay. Okay. For the first few days. Okay. I don't know. You guys. I assume you're just gonna play on the the Chinese uh, super server, right? Or, or are you guys gonna play? Probably. On okay. That also uh, is a good question. <laughs> but yeah, I assume they play on Chinese super server because so far usually you have to fill out something for the to get the Korean accounts, but we didn't do anything yet. Mm. So I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I guess it just depends where the majority of the pro players play. I think most people play on Korean server, so maybe we'll play there for the start. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay. I, uh, you know, I, I, I still remember the Mickey that I knew back in 2016. I remember myself like, a, like you caught me at the time where where I fell in love and I was a bit of a wild man back in 2016. <laughs> the the team pulled together and we managed to to get second place. Yes. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, I, I, I remember a guy that really, really loved the game, you know, like, I don't know if people know the story, but like, you were a fanatic sub. I had no clue you were a fanatic sub, but like, yeah. I, I think I was introduced to you through Spirit and we were just playing Spirit Dynamic Gamsu, Q. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we were just playing Dynamic Q and uh, I was playing for some reason, I don't remember what, I was playing mid, I think, mid, I was playing, playing mid Lulu? lane, I was playing Lulu, Azir, Victor. I remember Lulu, yeah. I was kind of smurfing by that. I was actually like, I was, I was decent. I was not too bad. But yeah. I, I remember playing with you, and I was so convinced uh, by you just because of how fast you would learn. Like you would learn so fucking fast. You were like a fucking sponge, bro. Like Spirit would tell you something one time. I would mention something one time. You just pick it up, and the next game you were just better. You were just better. You were just better. And um, I guess. And uh, back then, I saw you as this this kid that just loved the game. You know, you just loved the game. You were happy to be there. You were ordering your your salami pizza, and you were, <laughs> you, 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 were, you were at peace. Uh, you were at peace, and you were very content. And uh, I that kind of night, but it's fine. Kind of died. We're back. Okay. okay, I see you moving again. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you're back. <laughs> and I, uh, you you were very uh, not necessarily shy, but but you you always seemed uh, content. And this yeah. was, of course, a very long time, or 2016, 2017, like, how, what year are we now? 2024? Well, it's fucking seven years ago. It's crazy to <laughs> think about. It's a bit wild, yeah. So for someone that knew you back then, right? And we've had our interactions here and there, you know, with, with esports is, is a very busy life. Uh, for yeah. someone that knew you back then and now, you, how, how, how do you view your own personal growth? Like, what, what has, let's say, changed and, and, and how have you uh, matured? Uh, throughout all of your experiences because they've been so vast mm -hmm. um well i guess compared to before when i started especially 16 17 18 i think i was very quiet i didn't really want to talk much and just like i just assumed people know better than me so mm. i just listened you know <laughs> and learn um i think 
it was in 2018 in Misfits where I got benched. That's when I started thinking. Yeah. <laughs> That's when that was my first change where I started thinking, hmm, maybe everyone is not smarter than me. Maybe they're actually <laughs> stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so I started playing a little bit different. I started playing a bit more aggressive, I guess, instead of just listening. Okay. Um, and it worked in the scrims that I played, like after the benching. But then we lost, and I had a mega shit series versus Splice, I think. I think I was playing Alistar. I think I died like 27 times or something like that. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, that was a BG. But then, yeah. Well, luckily I got picked up by G2 afterwards, even <laughs> despite that. <laughs> so, yeah, that was great. And yeah, I think back in 2018, before I joined the Misfits, mm -hmm. apparently we could have joined G2, me and Kobe. Okay. But the problem is we didn't, we didn't talk enough. Like in Sprite, we actually just didn't talk, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I tried to work on that a bit. But it's still, like every team I've, I've been on, I was never really the one to talk much. Usually okay. play with AD carries that were very outspoken, except Kobe, I guess. But Hans was talk very talkative. Perks was very talkative. I get Caps maybe not as much. Um, and Reckless maybe not as much either, or Patrick. But at least in 2022, actually also, yeah, before 2022, before I joined Excel, mm -hmm. I feel like I was a pretty big passenger. Like, I never really did anything extra to try to okay. win. I was just like... You know, I was playing my solo queue, playing my scrims, you know, not much else to do. If we suck, well, I hope we get better. <laughs> you know, I just played the game a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And I guess in G2, it wasn't that big of an issue because whenever we were shit, Luca was the one that made sure we got better and went to, like, get us for VOD reviews or whatever. Mm -hmm. But once I joined Excel, no one else was really doing that. And I, I kind of... CV8 losing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I really, I really wanted to win, especially against G2, right? Um, so then I started to take that job on myself a bit to try to push everyone to get better. So we were doing like water reviews every night, like at the, at the end of summer. And I was really pushing for the Korean bootcamp as well. Didn't really work out in the end, but. <laughs> yeah, you guys were <laughs> good in the beginning. Like, you at least I felt like I tried. Whereas in the past, in the other teams, I never felt like I did everything I possibly could. Mm. So I guess in that sense, I guess I changed and now it's easier as well because now we're also getting forced by our staff to do a lot of extra stuff like presentations every like every split. We have one week, each player has a different presentation. So it makes you think outside the box a bit, try okay. to try to t find something that you can present to your team that they don't already know. Mm. And especially this year, it helped, or actually last year, it helped me discover a lot of new things that I never really thought about and not many people knew as well. Mostly okay. about like vision and stuff. But uh, yeah, it helped a lot, I think. So I guess that's probably my yeah, biggest change. Share, share, I took share, some, some, share some secrets, yeah. Mickey. Share some secrets. What did you present? Uh, question. <laughs> it <laughs> but, was from uh, last year. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, but Riot, Riot nerfed me. But it's still a thing. But Riot kind of nerfed me in that okay. regard. But I was like mega abusing it in yeah, last year. But okay. uh, yeah, I guess we'll never know. Huh? Okay. Well, you you said now you sent me on the goose chase. Now I'm gonna look at what you're doing. I'm gonna look mm. a little bit deeper. Okay. Mm. Okay. You keep your. I still do it sometimes. Okay. I can give you an example of when I did it in the okay. Blitzring game against Fnatic. So the third game. Yeah, yeah. I tried to do it once, like the thing that I learned. But mm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if enemy team even noticed it. <laughs> but it was. I was playing some mind games. You okay. I will, can, I will have a look now. I will have a look. Discover it. Yeah, anyway. Do you yeah, want to cool. do everything beat by beat? Let's, let's go through the sure. Mickey X life chronologically. Sure, yeah. the, the splice here were fun and all. The reflections. The, 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 the misfits, uh, like the, the you mentioned the benching. What the fuck yeah. happened there? Like, okay, so the reasoning just, just was... <laughs> the reasoning was we were bad and... We needed to see from the inside of the team how it works or why we're bad. And since Jess has played support, I guess he went to play support. Actually, it was funny because the thing happened just like randomly after a week. Okay, so it was an off day. Okay. Went to play, went to play football and I mega kicked the ground. So my, 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 <laughs> my fucking thumb was in mega pain. I was okay. like sitting on the couch and mega pain. And then they just, they just come in and it's like, oh yeah, by the way, um, we're going to have Jess play a bit. Actually, no, first they told me. We're going to share scrims, okay. like uh, 50-50. <laughs> but 
But then it turns out it was only 50-50. Mm-hmm. I think I got like not even one game in the whole week. I remember the last last game last day. Oh yeah. So then the last day before we play, it was the uh, match of the week came out. It was Misfits versus G2. Okay. <laughs> and they're talking about the bot and the matchup. <laughs> and I'm just like <laughs> saying, please let me play some like let me play a scrim game. Like I wanna <laughs> I wanna prove to you that like I'm I'm a better option, you know. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, we agreed that uh, you know we gotta do this for this week. I was like, yeah, fucking sex. So I remember that back then. I was just like queuing up for solo queue, putting some fucking music on. I remember I was listening to Evan Sense. Uh, what nice. was it called? Bring no, it to never, life. Not no, no, not that. Wait, was it My Mortal? I listened to My Mortal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I was rage queuing Perma. And I played against the Jesses and the uh, Hans duo queue. And I beat cool. him. And I was like, oh, that's right. <laughs> 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 but yeah, that was kind of my experience. But then after that, I think they went 1 1 that week. Mm. Um. I mean, I was still trying to, you know, to learn in scrims, see what I could do that Jesse does. I was just like trying to take notes and stuff. Um, I don't think I got that much from it personally. Okay. But um, yeah, it was an experience. It did change my perspective a little bit. So I guess it wasn't too bad. That's a, it's and a, I, yeah. It was a good thing in the end. Like you, you mentioned. I guess. You mentioned you but played. Maybe with... it would have worlds, you know. I don't know. Maybe if I got <laughs> no way, man. That was my worlds. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that was the the vein, the caps vein game in fuck in the best oh, of five. Oh yeah, that's fucked up. We that was won crazy. Game. You guys could have actually won that game. Yeah. The, the second the E into the wall on Tristana was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and game. it caps still brings it up like so many times about like oh my god I was shooting on you but like he got so outplayed like I doubled on a minion and then I Q flashed him because he was for some reason playing frontline vein yeah, yeah but yeah. he got away with it because we didn't have follow up. That, that, that whole game, like what he got away with. I remember, like, the 2v2s yeah. are made against the Galio, like, they, they were losing pretty hard. It was like Galio yeah, Trundle, was like, he was dying. It was like CS behind against Galio. I was, that was quite the steal. Was that like the game that would lead you guys into 2 0 or 2 1? It would be 2 1 after two one. if you won the game. Okay. okay. But that, that should have been should have been a win. And then we played yep. against you guys. I remember that series, like, fucking Alfari baited us. Because, like, it was. It was the Urgot, was OP, you remember that? Oh, shit? yeah, yeah, he was spamming in Soloki, right? Yeah, yeah, like LCK finals was played, there was Urgot, <laughs> like completely 1v9, we were like, fuck, fuck me, is this champion OP? And then Alfari was just playing like three games in Soloki, I was like, oh shit, yeah. we have to we ban have it, bet. guys. Yeah. You know what I remember about that best of five? Hmm. We, having Han Sama, banned you banned Draven. Draven, yeah! <laughs> I remember that, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I can't figure it out why that was a thing, but... Apparently, it helped our draft mm. in some way. So, was it a player decision yeah. or coach decision? Because it sounds like there was a lot of shitty coach decisions on this. With, no uh, comment. No <laughs> comment. Okay, okay. But it was not my decision because I was a passenger. Okay, <laughs> I, was, okay, okay. I was just like, yeah, if you guys think so, sure. <laughs> in, in regular split, did we run into... like Because we played Draven against you guys in regular split. Yeah, you guys won, yeah. You guys yeah. mega stomped us. And that we, was the game where... Dive. Yeah, yeah, it was a level 2 dive, and then Draven just comes with like Maw first item or something, or like, I don't know, BT and Maw is basically like yeah, killable. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I don't know what we were playing though. We were playing some AP. Why does he go Maw? I don't know. Anyway. Then we got, we got, we got into you guys' head. I was surprised yeah. by the Draven ban. It's like, you yeah. know how like you stay up <laughs> night, you know, prepare scenarios. It's like, yeah. like I, I think in that series, we were planning to ban Draven last. Oh, really? So Wait, it's like, if you guys didn't time. ban Draven, we would have banned Draven on red. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we prepared like Kate. We had like Kate ready because it's like our thing back then was to play. We we were playing all the eighties that nobody else was playing just to 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 create like variants. You know, we just wanted to be like different that year. Yeah. And then you guys banned uh, Draven straight. I remember first game you guys dropped Zyra Khan on us and we played Ezreal Leona and we kind of ran it down. You guys shot on us. Oh, and, and oh, we won game one actually. I remember we had to get in three zero. <laughs> <laughs> you won the Arakan game. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah, people started betting Rakan, Kalista, Draven at some point, and then it was a bit hard to play. Mm. The classic. But Rakan was kind of OP, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. was back then, you could just like insta flash, like you could just W, and then you get ultimate there. Like that shit was so OP. And it was that is kind of mental how many times they've nerfed Rakan, and Rakan is still kind of OP. <laughs> <laughs> like what, what he was in the back in the day was yeah, <laughs> it was kind of crazy. 
You, you played with Hans. You know, the, the, what what did you remember from back then that uh, made it uh, intriguing to play with him uh, coming into this year again? Because, like, Hans, you know, obviously, like, most of us knew Hans Sam was fucking good. You know, like, I was yeah. watching him over in Team Liquid, and he looked like, I would imagine that he was just really sad. You know, he was hovering yeah. like Lucian, and then he had to look in Seraphine. Yeah. <laughs> I could see, like, the sadness, you know, like, sometimes <laughs> players do, like, subliminal things, and then he has to play Seraphine and Jinx every game, like... It's as if yeah. someone, uh, you know, put a fucking chastity belt on his fucking champion pool. Actually, it's actually, I think it's an ADK thing. A lot of ADK is like hover what they really want to pick, but then yeah, they pick something yeah. else. <laughs> I think it's an ADK thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, I thought Hans was always like really good. I think in 2018, when we played together, I felt like we were like so fucking insane. Like mm. me and Hans. Um, actually, was there anyone that I thought was better than us? No, probably not. I think we were actually the best, yeah, in 2018 already. So I always had very good memories of Hans and I didn't really and then also when he was in Rogue he was playing really fucking well mm. and after even after a bad year in NA I didn't think he would like be bad because it's just like people that go to NA usually tend to play a bit worse I would say yeah yeah so I didn't really look too much into it and also it was just very nice to play with Hans as well because like he talked a lot as well right and mm. so then like it complimented me a lot but also it's not like he was up to me, you know, like it was up to Hans to want to play with me. Okay. G2 wanted to go with Hans, right? But then they just asked him, like, what support you want to play with? And then he wanted to play with me. So then that is how I joined G2, you know? Yeah. I think someone, someone talked about it at some point. No, I, so, I, I, I remember hearing some, some similar rumor that, because uh, yeah. like when I was, like, I was in Fnatic 2022 and we were leading into the off season of 2023, it's like, me and Wunder were like, yo, we need to fucking get Hansam and Mickey. We have to fight for them. Come yeah. on, man. <laughs> what are we doing? And if we can't get these guys, just roll with yeah. with uh, run back up Satili and see see what's up. But uh, and yeah. they ended up with um, rocks and reckless. It was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I remember. I was having a lot of talks with Wunder. Yeah. It was a bit <laughs> a bit sad, but sucks. Happens, you know. Off seasons yeah. are, 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 are a roller coaster. Was there yeah. a, ever, a, ever a point in time where you could have been in North America, but something changed? Yeah, <laughs> yeah could have been. <laughs> uh, after, so just before I joined Excel, okay. or after basic YouTube, mm -hmm. there was a chance I could go there. But uh, what can you reveal? <laughs> oh, you're I'm not sure how much so I <laughs> it is. It is funny, but I'm not sure how much I can talk about it. So I think we have to wait with that one. Okay. But there was a chance, yeah. I was like just keeping all your secrets, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um the thing was my bad was a bit high. But um mm. yeah. There was another team that could in theory afford it. Okay. But uh yeah, I think that was one time I could go. Besides that, I'm trying to think back in twenty eighteen when I went with Misfits. I'm sure there was offers, but I never really considered them. I would only like consider actually the teams that were like winning there. Okay. So, yeah. I, I guess the, the the main thing that I'm trying to get out of you is, was it circumstantial that you were always in Europe? Or was it something in the back of your mind that you wanted to no. stick around in Europe due to competition? Yeah, I always kind of wanted to stick around just to compete. But also, I was thinking, if I were to go to NA, mm -hmm. I would not really know anyone there, most likely. So I didn't really want to go into a new environment. Like most of the people that I know or that I hang out with are here in Berlin. Yeah, yeah. So I think it would be too big of a shift in environment. And I, I mean, it depends if I could for sure win the split, then I would consider it worth. But if I'm, I have like some doubts, like oh maybe this is like a bit too risky, then I'll probably just always rather stay in Europe. You know. No, makes and, sense. And um, yeah, I mean. Even that year, I think the Excel roster, I think we could have made it like the Worlds very easily. And then I think our roster was actually good. Mm. So even if I could get a good NA offer where I could think that I could win, I'd probably still rather go to the Excel roster just because it's like, I don't know, I think the players were good. And it just, I don't know, I, I like it here more. And I think it's just better competition. Yeah, yeah. I think at business I was afraid I would, I was afraid I would lose my motivation if i would go to an a for example because mm. a lot of a lot of players that go to there kind of like lose it or just they get worse like hard was an example for example he just got worse when he went there okay and there's a lot of players like this i think like i remember his used to be like 
so fucking same in Europe in Europe in G2. I thought he was actually like the best player ever. Yeah, yeah. Like on an AD. Like he was hard to play against him. I think Mitty was also insane. Um who else went there? Uh I, I don't know, Spencer like, went there. Yellow Star went at some point after like the Fnatic yeah, He looks run. pretty bad over there. Yeah, yeah. Trying to think who else. Yeah. I didn't really wanna flip it that hard. Makes There's also a chance I would go to Sandbox actually. Oh, <laughs> like, shit. In a, to, like you said of Excel. I was talking to Sandbox and then uh it was just like uh I was like, Yeah, maybe I'll I'll talk to them. I think yeah, but then the GM was like, actually we have uh have concerns about language barriers, like yeah, that's yeah, surprising. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, was... I probably should have thought about that before we restart, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I was thinking the same. <laughs> yeah. I was, funny, I was pretty in I was pretty crazy to go. Uh <laughs> like I had a pretty fucking good translator. That was the only reason there was like yeah. remotely any like success. Cause I like I, I chose a translator. I could pick like translators that worked as translators, but I picked a okay. translator that had uh, worked in America in like top restaurants. So basically okay. he was he he's a chef that worked in like really stressful environments, you know, like 16 hour work shifts, you know, prep into, into rock and roll. You get shouted at, and it's like, it's very intense. And uh, also he like competed in challenger series in like season one. So I was like, okay, this is my guy. (laughs) I had like a long list of like people with like achievements. Like this person has translated this finals and blah, blah, blah. I was like, no, I want this guy. And it was just, uh, it it worked out well. Cause he was, he was there like 12, 15 hours a day, no problem. And uh, he like never left, and he just understood the game too. So it was it was, was, he, was cool. he, he he knew the game well enough to like uh, translate ideas, you know. And yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Like he went on to become uh, the analyst for Genji, and then he went for Damwa. Oh, really? So so he like he he okay. he moved up in the world. Because without that guy, nothing would have worked for sure. His name is <laughs> his name is Jay. So shout out to shout out to Jay. Jay, I um. Uh, in terms of, I remember like you move into 2019. It's like, in, in, in terms of how appreciated you are as a player, I think that when it comes to, like now everybody knows that you're fucking, you know, you're in the GOAT category of, of support. You have had so many, you have many fucking titles. You've made your way back up last year, MVP, such a consistent year from your end. 2019, you went through fucking hand pain and so forth. Uh, yeah. And uh, you, you've been through so many fucking pain points, but you have made your way back up to to the title. You know, it's like you, you've deserved everything that has come your way. But back in the days, I think that you were appreciated uh, most by all your peers. I think that all, all, all players around you always appreciated for, for you for, for your skill. It's like sometimes there are players that are appreciated by players, and then there's sometimes that just people, sometimes they just get a little bit of hype and, you know, Reddit uh, uh, speaks uh, too highly of them. But yeah. I, I speak about this because you move into 2019. You said 2018, you were surprised to some degree because it was uh, a bit of a rough year, you know, with, with everything going up and yeah. down. But the move into 2019, uh, I remember in the off season there was dual queues with Perks and Mithy and all the and, and not Perks <laughs> and, and 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 Mickey of course and all the rumors yeah. started. Uh, how how did everything begin? You know, did Perks meet you at the pool or or <laughs> <laughs> was what was the, what was the story? What was the genesis story of of 2019 from your perspective? Um, yeah, I guess I talked to Luca first about the whole thing, but then at some point, me and Cap started talking because we were both free agents. Mm-hmm. And then, for some reason, I don't know why he wanted to play with me, but I really wanted to play with Caps, of course. Yeah, yeah. So then we were kind of like a package deal, I guess. So okay. we were deciding where, where we want to go. And then Perks had the idea with G2, right? And I was like, well, that sounds kind of sick. Because I also knew Wunder, right? So that would, playing with Wunder again would be fun. I didn't really know Jankos at that point, but I thought he was good at least. Mm. Um, And then I guess we were deciding between going Schalke as well. I think Schalke at the time would be like... Trick, I think it was Trick at the time. Upset, and I think they wanted to get BB maybe. Okay. I didn't really know BB at the time. Um, they just basically said like, "Oh yeah, some rookie top laner." Mm. And then, yeah, I think in the end, oh yeah, also what was fucked up was that while this offseason was going on, it was pretty stressful. And then at some point, Caps decides to not be online for a whole day 
<laughs> and I was like spamming him. Everyone is spamming him on, on like everywhere because we're talking <laughs> about like where we wanna go, right? He just disappears for one whole day. I was like, what the fuck is this guy doing? So yeah, that was He went to NA. He signed a yeah. contract with Team Liquid. <laughs> yeah. That was that was a scary time. But uh yeah, in the end I guess we decided for G two because I guess it was just like more fun. Um Yeah, I guess we just thought that we would have a high chance to win him. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah, it kinda worked out I guess. How uh, did did the perks need to convince you at all about him playing AD, or did it just make sense to you uh, no. right off the bat? I was I was convinced. I didn't really need much convincing. Okay. Maybe it was Jankus more. Jankus needed more convincing, maybe. <laughs> but I don't know. I was just. I mean, I also played a lot of games with him, like on AD, like Duo Q. Mm-hmm. So I knew he was good on like specific champions. Like he played a lot of Kalista, Lucian, Kaisa already. Yeah, yeah. And Zaya, I think as well at that point. So I knew he was good at least on these champions. So I didn't really have any worries about if he's going to be good or no. But I knew that even if he was bad, he would be able to improve at like a good enough pace that we would we, we would win, you know. Okay, okay. And that's kind of how it went, I think. Like at the start, he was like a little bit shaky. But I think uh, he was like very motivated as well because it's always more fun to try a new role and try to learn as much as possible about it. Mm. So, yeah, it went kind of smoothly. I think there was... Um... Like there, there was a lot of circumstances that attributed to you guys having such a successful year, right? Like I think uh, in terms of you guys being ahead of the curve in terms of like uh, shaping the meta, I think that you guys were very... I, I, I didn't feel like you guys were tied into ideas in terms of how you want to play the game. You guys could kind of figure it out on the fly. And I think at the time it was very, very new, right? Because especially like the teams from Korea... They drafted a very set way, and they needed to kind of have those steps into the in in the game and and to follow through. And you guys were very adaptable and 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 flexible. Uh, I guess before we move on from 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 the first conversation, I wanted to ask as 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 a duo, how how did you view your own strengths and what made you guys so different? Because I think looking at the entire year, you guys were up there with uh, like the best bot lanes globally. I would say. Yeah, I mean, I think what made us good was just the amount of stuff we could play. We mm-hmm. kind of just played like everything. I felt like, like we, I mean, of course, when we got like Zaya and Kaisa, I felt like we were really good. I think Perks is really good at those. But we could also play like Draven. Like I remember we played Draven Morgana at MSI. That was pretty clutch. And even though Luca didn't have many games on Draven, he was still like, it was just a good matchup. So we mm-hmm. just picked it, and it worked. You know, like he was good at it. Uh, he wasn't like Han Sama level, but he was like good. You know. Like, yeah, yeah. He was very good, fast. It's picking up new stuff, and we also tried a lot of random shit. Like actually, we tried too much random shit. I remember we played like Rakan Yumi bot lane and shit like this, or like Blitzkrieg Yumi, some random ass shit. After Pike Yumi was okay at that point. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Well, the fuck is that? So, against Pike Yumi the first time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like we played like Alistar via Vigar and shit like this, and we flexed Cinder a lot. Like the Cinder flex kind of won us a lot of games. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I felt like whenever we got Cinder, AD carry. We just couldn't lose. Like it was way too easy. Like to lane or like it's but someone we played like Nico as well. AD carry it was just like so OP. Like laning was very easy. Um, so I guess that was our strength. Um, but overall, we were just like I guess Luca was very good around Colin Young as well. That's also mm-hmm. one of my weaknesses where I don't want to take my jungler away from whatever he's doing. Okay. But Luca was very demanding, so that was good. And Hans now as well is doing a similar job. Um, usually I'm more like the guy that says, oh, actually, we don't need you. Or if you need him, like, yeah, actually, it'll be good. Okay. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> but I'm not the one to say, like, oh, come back right now, we need help, or like, we're going to fuck them if you come or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, um, we need push out. But then it's like, oh, I can't. Okay. Then we have to play it out. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Okay. Then, that, I guess, yeah, that was kind of our strength. Something that I, I remember noticing with, with you guys... I felt like what what you guys had above everybody else, I think that in terms of how you guys managed your waves, it was kind of more like solo laners would do. Because I remember Perks was like one of the only few ADs that actually like farmed side properly. Like, oh, this wave he can push, he slow pushes this into the next one, while most ADs were just kind of, Watch for the lack of a better term, stupid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think, just forgive and push that. <laughs> yeah, just so I can hit the wave and then like move or yeah. just stand on mid and just uh, not really, really actively, let's say, tune into what's going on in the game. And I think this was something that uh, uh, you guys did super, super well. 
I uh, nope. wanted to ask, the, the, the whole Promise Q saga 2019, in terms of um, your injury, because like, I remember watching you and I thought that you got, you still had fucking insane form when you actually played. How, how, how different, was that, what different was that experience to you for the first time where something kind of puts a stop on how much you can play? Because you, as uh, I remember you as, as like the grinder, you know, you like, you love yeah. spamming the game and that had to be such a different kind of, uh, a very different situation for you. How, how, how do you remember that experience? Mm, yeah, that that period was a little bit rough because. Because what happened in the wrist in the first place? I mean, it was like okay, so it just randomly it was not hurting like both 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 hands. Okay. So I went to the doctor and stuff, try to figure out what is wrong. I think I went to two different three different doctors maybe, mm -hmm. and none of them could give me like a normal diagnosis. They were just like, oh, it's probably an inflammation, probably. Mm. But usually, <laughs> when you like press on it and stuff, it would hurt or like it would be more consistent. But mine was just like. Fucking random. Like sometimes it hurt, sometimes it didn't. I went through like a lot of different physios and stuff. Like I did like ice therapy, I did heat therapy, I did cups or whatever the fuck. Yeah, the uh, suction cups. I don't know. Yeah, that thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. There was like so much different shit that I tried. I did acupuncture as well in Korea. Okay. Um. Yeah, it kind of wasn't getting better. Yeah. So that one, that period, it was a bit scary because I was like, oh, I guess that's just my career, you know? I guess I just Jeez. have to fucking retire. Yeah, that was not great. Um, but yeah, I was mega desperate. So on the on the way to Korea, when we were flying for MSI, mm -hmm. actually, I guess before that, I was just like playing through the pain, kind of like in the finals, for example, just like in between every game, they gave me like some uh, cold packs or whatever okay. outside. And I was just like sitting there like, yeah, I guess it kind of helped for a bit, but it was still kind of painful or like, I don't know, it was not painful the whole time, but just like random, you know, as I said, it, it didn't make any sense. Like sometimes I play, or like, ow, it hurts, and then oh, it goes away in like five, ten seconds. But it was like, <laughs> yeah, weird. So I was mega desperate. So then mm -hmm. one fan randomly sent me a PDF file on Twitter. Okay. About a book called Pain Free for Life. It was basically just like something about like mental and like stress and all that, about how it can impact your like physical pain, and then. Yeah, I kind of read that, and then the next day, because before when I ate with chopsticks in Korea, I couldn't actually finish a meal because it was too painful. Mm. But then after I read that shit, one day after I could actually eat a normal meal without, you know, dying on my arm. Really? And the, basically, the thing was to just you have to like the thing was basically just to basically do to go through the pain. Like even if you feel it, just don't stop doing whatever you're doing. So I was okay. queued up for solo queue. I played some games. It was a bit painful, but I just kept playing. And then at some point, it was just like fine, like after a week. It was like so fucking weird, and I don't know. Really? I don't even know what, how it worked. But it just kind of stopped, yeah, kind of went away. I didn't have any problems since then. So that was great. <laughs> maybe it was random, because at the same time, I was doing acupuncture. So maybe that was the reason. Maybe it was okay. just time. But the timing was a bit convenient, yeah. And you've and never had see... issues again? No. And I could see how stress could be an issue because that was after the Misfits year. It was pretty yeah, stressful. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I guess. Makes sense. Hmm. But yeah, it was just like really fucking random. And, and so this yeah, was, now it's what, what was the timing? Sorry, Do you, the, the timing was when you were at MSI? When was the yeah. timing? That was during MSI, yeah. Okay. Like when we actually went there for the bootcamp, it was still like painful for like one, one week. And during that week, I was just like going to acupuncture every few days. And then uh, Hampus was playing scrims. Okay. And I was like spectating. I um, was playing some raid at that time because I didn't use, couldn't use my hands. And I was watching a lot of spots. But then when I actually started playing and screaming, I felt like I was playing better. I don't know why. So, I don't, yeah. I think maybe it was because if I played too much, then I, I test too much limits. But when okay. I was like, oh shit, I didn't play in a while. I need to play like normal. It's not into my team. I was actually playing fine, like better. So yeah, man, I don't know. <laughs> it it kind of it kind of worked out fine, yeah. No, it's uh, like I, I remember your form was was pretty fucking insane. Like your Rakan was 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 legendary. Like your 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 form was 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 really really good. But you you played less, and the way I viewed it was like, whoa, this is maybe the first time Mickey plays less in his life because the first thing he does yeah. after 
winning a game, winning an LEC match, he goes to play solo queue, or when the season finishes, he sticks around, he plays more solo queue, he just loves the game, yeah. maybe to his own detriment sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't have much else to do, so. <laughs> very interesting. I, I, I wonder yeah. if it was just uh, a case of maybe habitual pain that you're the, the the pain was so habitual that you needed to just kind of break the cycle somehow but i'm yeah. curious about the book i will look it up <laughs> yeah interesting I can, I can write it down after because i'd be worried you know like if, if if your body's trying to signal pain that usually your body's trying to tell you something but yeah maybe, maybe That's I, what I thought as well yeah maybe our body but i mean my, my my main like like my why I actually decided to go with it, which is because when I went to the doctor, it was like, oh yeah, it's probably inflammation. I don't mm -hmm. fucking know though. Should go away in like a month or two, three months after, still the same. I'm like, yeah, it's fucking doomed, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Might as well do something stupid. I guess it worked. Okay, that's very interesting. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm in awe. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. I never told you about it before. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit of a weird story because I remember telling telling it a lot in 2019. But it's like, it seems just troll. Yeah. <laughs> it's like thinking about it, it sounds so fucking troll. But yeah, yeah whatever, it worked. Okay, so you just you just threw your pain in the dirt and moved on. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's yeah. pretty based. <laughs> you have to push through it. I had to stop being a victim. Okay. That, that's what I would say. Holy, what a machine. Yeah. And, and, and sincerely, you've never had pain since. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you like you might play too much, like hurts for like a few minutes, but then it's like, whatever. Oh, cool, okay. But that is like, but it's not like, no, yeah. deserved pain, you know? It's like, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you have yeah, a headache. Break, you know? I'm like, okay, I bet. Yeah. Okay, okay. It just happens sometimes. Okay. But nothing more like extreme. You mentioned 2019. You saw how Perks was working. You saw a man who took initiative. You saw a group of people that uh, took initiative to 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 solve problems, is what Wunda said too, right? In terms of how you guys worked, it's like. If something was wrong, like no one would just let it be, you know. Yeah. And you talked about how that shaped you. Um, how 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 would you describe like uh, your 2019 workflow and that how how that has uh, has shaped you? If if you can elaborate on that further, because 2019 is such a legendary year, you mm -hmm. know. So uh, any any My legacy you can give away your workflow and the team's workflow and how you've tried to let's say recreate that uh, in 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 your future teams mm -hmm. beyond that year. Well, I was kind of AFK because I was just playing solo queue, but. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess Perks is doing most of the heavy lifting in that regard. Whereas if we were like losing scrims or not, I guess we didn't lose much scrims, but I guess if we lose, lost on stage a game, or like especially when I remember when we lost against Mad Lions, I think, in like mm -hmm. uh, upper bracket. Oh, I, casted, bracket. I, I, I casted that one, I think. Yeah, that was 2020, that was right? Yeah, that was 2020. Yeah. It was uh, Caps, Caps AD. I remember the Ziggs game. <laughs> yeah, that one. The Shadow Olaf. <laughs> yeah, that one. And I was playing Bard. It was one of my only Bard losses. Fuck. Jeez. And then, uh, basically, we just went... After every day, at 10 p.m., we just went to watch the games back. Or just, like, any VOD review for, like, one hour and just talk about stuff. And every time we did it, then... I felt like we were so much better the next day, like mm. of scrims, or just like in general, we were just like improving a lot. And then during the season, he, like Perks took a lot of time to talk to everyone one-on-one -on -one if they felt like, if he felt like they had any issues. So I remember we went to like, to the far place and we ate some far and then we talked about the team or how stuff is going, just like stuff like this, which I would never do personally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now I kind of do it, but it's also very encouraged by my staff to do like one-on-ones and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. But back in the day, I was just like, you know, I was just chilling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was playing some games. And then if you win, we win. If you don't, zucks. we win next time. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess that's kind of how it went. Um, besides that, I think for reviews, it was mostly just like perks and caps talking a lot. The, the, like their points of view. I think usually they had the, mo the most arguments. Um, because, yeah, I mean, sometimes it would just be like pointless. Like they would just argue for thirty minutes just to argue, okay, just for like mid lane ego or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was like a bit annoying sometimes, but at least most of the reviews we actually had good points. Um, yeah, I guess the rest of us, like me, Wonder, Yankos, I guess the other two sometimes contributed in reviews and stuff. But outside the game, I guess we didn't really do much. Oh, I guess Perks also made sure that we do, did a lot of team activities together. Okay. So I don't know, we went for food out together or we went like, I don't know, escape room. 
or you just played like Magic or something. I guess I was, I was, I was very adamant about playing Magic because that was fun. I think mm -hmm. that was the year where we started playing Magic a lot. We still play it on off-seasons, so that's fun. Um, yeah, I guess that was it, yeah. In, in terms of how um, it has shaped, uh, for example, now your schedule at, uh, at G2, I imagine that you guys have taken a lot of I I ideas from there, right? I think making sure that one-on-one -on -one time is, is a part of the schedule. It's like usually when people describe like successful teams, it's usually the same thing. It's like people just felt the need to spend more time together to actually yeah. figure just shit out, right? Yeah, I think that's a big thing. But uh, I don't think we like kind of took it from the 2019 because, okay, so when I was talking for 2022, when I was talking to Romain about joining the team, mm -hmm. so whoever, whatever team I talked to, I made sure to mention that I want a team where people would like spending time together and I also liked just like, yeah, just spending time with each other and do one on ones and all that. And then I talked to Romain. That was the first two things he mentioned, and I was like, "Oh damn, we we think the same, you know? That's what a team needs." Yeah, so yeah. for me, it was like very easy to just be like, "Okay, well, it's a no-brainer, you know." I just joined here because they have the same idea of how a team should be winning. Um, but yeah, so far it's working out. So okay. That's great. No, that's. I wish other teams would do similar. That's super good. But I also only realized it like, you know, after Excel, like I realized how, realized how important it is. So. Yeah, that's why um, from now on I'll always do it, or like at least always fight for it. Something that's... Um, you guys are... You, you have apartments, right? You don't have yeah. a gaming house, right? So the office structure. Yeah, I, I think I mean, that... basically, yeah, we have an office, but we also have uh, like a whole flat, basically, where we just all live. Okay. On. I guess BB has his own, mm. but last year he lived with us as well. Um, and then we just walk to the for office every time every time it's scream so it's pretty chill there's something about gaming houses that was very good because you were just yeah, forced like to spend time together right uh, in, yeah and then everything every issue would would just surface so easily and you would just mingle yeah. all the time and just those small interactions that you have like even if someone's playing solo queue and you're like low-key backseating him like flaming him for yeah. like even those small interactions they add up so so quickly yeah. Uh, it's um, it's like the work-life balance idea of in in a world where you want to fucking compete. I think it's a bit of a bit of a joke sometimes, you know. It's yeah. Like um, especially on my end, it's like when when I go to Berlin, it's like last in in KC now, it's like we go to the office at ten and then we stay there till two, and then you know the homies that were staying like we were all staying together in like this uh, apartment complex. Some of the homies they had their own apartments, but they just pieced out after scrims and. It just wasn't the same, you know. It just really, yeah. really wasn't the same. It's yeah. Like, um, yeah, I don't like that. I think, I think since Splice, I felt like this is always better. Mm. Like, I think if we didn't have like a gaming house in Splice, I think we would not very make it very far. I think I don't know. I think it's just so important because th like that's kind of when I also realized how important this when I was comparing it to other years. Mm. I guess mostly Misfits. I mean, Misfits we still were in a gaming house. But just people didn't really hang out as much. Like people just go to the rooms, you know, after scrims or whatever. Uh, pieces in but the room. Place, room. <laughs> yeah. But it's place, I guess we didn't have pieces in our room. At least I didn't. So we we're just always playing there. It was always like mega fun. I remember just like memeing with Hans as well when he was like our manager. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like mega fun. Just like bantering all the time and just like watching Game of Thrones. I still remember. Yeah. It was just like a lot of good moments where yeah you can just get closer with the team because at that point i was the only non-danish person on the team yeah, yeah and then i noticed at some point at the start of the year actually no, that was in 2017 i noticed that whenever they were trying to flame me or talk about me they used the word yelpa which is like helper okay <laughs> at, at some point i caught on and then at some and then i felt kind of bad that whenever they said it i was like oh shit, they're flaming me or something <laughs> But at least because we spent so much time together, it was like at that point it was maybe like a year. Mm. I could like talk about it, or like I remember we had a discussion on the couch where I was talking about it, and after that, it was a lot better. Mm. But I feel like if everyone just had went their separate ways and we never really talked about anything, and just like we go, we scrim, 
I, I hear the word Yelpa while screaming, you know, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone just pieces out home and like, fuck, another shit, shit day. You know? But yeah, so that was nice. That no, was... Uh... It was a good time. I feel bad because, like, I joined Mitchum Makers and Nisbet was on the team. I bench yeah. him. I joined <laughs> Splice after they qualify. I bench Nisbet <laughs> again. Oh my god! I benched him twice from two different LEC teams after he <laughs> qualified. <laughs> Probably his worst enemy. Yeah, yeah it, was, it, was, it, was, it was rough. That's fucked up. But Mickey was the real deal. Like, it was uh, easy to see. Actually, yeah. I was wondering who was like in charge of the decision to actually get me on the team. I push for it. I, nice. I push for it. And like at the time, like Nisbet, you know, I love Nisbet, great guy, but he wasn't performing, you know, so so we had a bit of a, a hole there. Because mm. the other guys, like the, the, the other homies, they didn't want to fucking dynamic you. They didn't want to play too much. Yeah. They didn't want to play too much. And I remember when, when you joined the team, like in summer, I, I remember running into you guys playing as five and I was playing with elements because Steve wasn't playing yeah. and I beat you guys and the energy in the room <laughs> after you guys lost. It was it was horrible. <laughs> you guys never played back in dynamic ever again. I don't know. remember that. Sounds funny. I remember <laughs> my wins, you know. <laughs> I need to take them. Fair enough. Because <laughs> I remember I think I didn't I didn't really know Anyone from the Splice guys? The mm. only one I knew was Senkooks. Mm. And I met him in solo queue when I was playing Duo with Candy Panda. Okay. And he was flaming Candy Panda. So I was flaming him back. And that was mm. my only interaction with Senkooks. <laughs> I was like, I really hate this guy. I'm never going to play with him. <laughs> and then, yeah, it was kind of funny. No, I, I, I believed in you. I believed in you very hard. But back then, bro, the whole squad, they were all fucking super young. Like, yeah. They, they were, well, everyone was super, super young. And like in, in, in spring, in spring, like no one knew shit about the game, but it was it was healthy in a way because it was very easy to make everyone buy into the same idea. Like back then, like their view of the game was very robotic. It's like guys, we need to pick engage, so we have to pick yeah. engage. We pick mall fight on five, and then it's like, <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Like, the only person that really like challenged ideas and who who was like actively like fighting was. Um, was Wunder, you know? It's like Wunder mm -hmm. I had to fucking I argued with him a lot, you know, because Yeah. But but that stubbornness can be healthy sometimes, you know? It's like Wunder doesn't let uh, things be if he doesn't believe in them, you know? He has that like a little bit of fight yeah. in him. But yeah. in in spring, I think most of my work was was in spring and then in summer I was coasting a bit, you know, I was freshly in love. <laughs> you guys uh, that was yeah. uh, the, the the payback that I got from from the work in spring. Which which feels f silly to me because that's where I got uh, coaching staff of the year, you know, in summer. Oh, really? I look back at that year as the as the as uh, like that split as the split that I worked the least in my career, which is so it's like mm. that, that that trophy there is just a reminder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. But I don't. I felt like in 2016 when I joined, mm. I think you were teaching me a lot about just how to play the game. Mm. I think it was more 2017 where. I didn't, I didn't feel like I was learning anything. But 2016, for sure, I think you were helpful for me, at least, because mm. I was kind of new, so I didn't really know much about the game. So, yeah, it's interesting you think 2016 was the worst one. I thought 17 was worse. <laughs> <laughs> at least for me. <laughs> no, it was, um, was a transition period, 2017, 2016. Yeah. It, was, it was a good time to, to move on. But I don't regret it. I found uh, the love of my life, and... To be clear, I don't blame her at all. I blame myself for how I manage things. You know, it's it's the responsibility of the man. It's like when people say girlfriends ruin esports. No, no, no. It's it's, it's 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 the guys who don't know how to manage responsibilities. You know, that's true. I and, blame you uh, as well if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm engaged now, and I'm, I, I I don't regret it. You know, but um, it was. Yep. Um, I think I think in 2017, it was. Um, I was moving into an apartment and oh, yeah. Splice promised to help me and everything happened during the split. And back then, like, oh, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. So it was uh, just... Yeah, 2016, uh, you were living with us, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 2017 mm, was a fucking sense, yeah. mess on the head because moving into an yeah. apartment first time, uh, like, I remember like I was like renting cars and like driving to Ikea. I was like, I, now yeah, looking yeah. back at that, I'm like, what the fuck did I do? <laughs> like just fucking order the shit. Like I'm being so yeah. fucking stupid. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I remember <laughs> as, uh, <laughs> now how things have changed, how things have changed. I, uh, yeah. 20, we, we're talking about 2019, 
2019. You know, you 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 told me that you were a package deal. You, Caps wanted yeah. to play with you. You know, being in the Caps package. If Caps wants to be in in the package the same as you, that's 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 a blessing. But yeah, uh, working with Caps, yeah. how do you describe it? Like, what, what makes not you a guess? So... <laughs> <laughs> not a blessing. No, I mean it's like it's weird when you play with other mid laners that are mm -hmm. not Caps. Then you can really see the difference okay. about how much Caps brings to the team, or just I guess the gameplay wise, like he just brings so much pressure that you can always have someone that if you get ahead, it's probably gonna win the game. Mm. He also could kind of play anything. I guess nowadays he's more of a one trick, like Azir and stuff, and Oriana. But back then he would just play anything. Um, he also just has a lot of fun when he plays the game, so it's like very refreshing to see. It's motivating as well when you see him perma play solo queue or just like perma spam the game, perma talk about the game, just like lives the game. Then it's also like easy to follow that, I guess. Mm. So yeah, in that sense. It is very nice. I think he can be very stubborn, though. Okay. And that's what that's what I learned in the last couple of years. Quite a stubborn person. So I guess that's the downside of caps. But okay. sometimes stubbornness helps. But yeah, it's like a double-edged sword, I guess. Okay. But if but, yeah. if anyone's <laughs> worth it, it's it's caps, right? It's like... Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And also sometimes he decides to play like Pike when in the, when you're in the world final. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that was on me as well. This one was my bet too. I was pushing for it as well. Bro, I thought when you guys looked well. it in, bro. I thought when you guys looked it in, I was like, oh, Wunder is playing Pike. And then, <laughs> like, you guys were just going to commit into playing full bot side. And then yeah. uh, you just contest bot side, and there will be no top laner for, for, for Gimgun to, to dive. <laughs> how it went was so the discussion went, okay, so they're going to pick Nautilus mid. I don't know why we didn't want to ban it, but I maybe we didn't have bans. Anyway. Um, so we're like, okay, what do we pick against it? Because we pick any mage like Oriana, Syndra. Mm -hmm. They're gonna have Nautilus Lee Sin, so he's gonna just come mid and flash auto attack, and then Midland's gonna die, like the mage. Yeah, yeah. So, but then if we have a champion that is safe and ca they can't do it against, he's gonna roam and kill the side lanes. Okay. Because he pushes as well really fast to Nautilus. So we're just thinking of a champion that can match the roams and can't die to flash auto attack. And Pike was a champion that we found. Yeah, yeah. I think I remember <laughs> we were also <laughs> practicing. We were practicing like. Olaf versus Nautilus one on one. So I think Wunder and Caps are practicing that. Okay. And Camille versus Nautilus, and Orn versus Nautilus. Um, I don't know. I don't know if, even know if you tried the pike. <laughs> 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 but like when you think about it, when you look back, when you're in the world final, you just become so stupid. Like it actually like, doesn't make sense. Like looking back at it, we were so stupid. Like we just needed someone to come in and tell us, like guys. Are you guys serious? Like, there's just no way that's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like our draft talks. Our draft talks were just like so stupid as well. Like, I remember in game two, we were like, oh, yeah, we were talking about if they play Galio or not, because we played a lot of Yasuo Gragas bot, okay. and the only counter was, Yas was Galio support. Mm. And then we were talking about it, do they play it? And I think Luca was like, no, it's only Kojiji that plays Galio. And we're like, ah, okay. So we just picked it, and then they picked Galio in game two, and we were like, Oh shit! <laughs> we just didn't have like any other plan except like oh they just won't pick it. But in the big team was like oh, oh. that sucks. I guess we lose. <laughs> nice. I mean that game we were like fucking trolling as well. I think Caps also first timing first timing Tristana as well because like we were looking back at it with Caps because every now and again me and Caps have like this uh, going down memory lane session where yeah, we just yeah. go watch our games. It, like we go watch the world's games, and then we were watching and throughout the whole worlds or the whole year. We were perma winning with like Oriana, Syndra, more mages, normal champs, and then the final, first time Vigar, first time Pike, first time Tristan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like so troll. Yeah, I don't know. And also yeah. like game three, I think we gave them like Zaya, but we bent Kaisa, so we couldn't pick Kaisa. Like we didn't want to trade. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Actually, I don't know. We were just like stupid. So yeah, for now, for next time, if we make it that far, we just have to actually think. Like just think, <laughs> like don't be stupid. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I remember also we were playing like Euro teams and we were getting some Z mid like practice. That was useful. Oh. Yeah. Anyway. No good McDonald's team and yeah. what was it? Uh, was it in Europe this time? It was in Europe. Right? It was in Europe, yeah. yeah. So we we're playing some Euro team, yeah. I don't know who it was. It was LDLC or something. But the thing is, I don't know. People just like they don't want the region to win. I don't know why, <laughs> but I can kind of I can kind of see it because if I if I would be the one 
in that position where I'm trying to give someone practice so they can win worlds, I'll be like, no, I want to be the first <laughs> to win worlds. <laughs> I can kind of see that angle. Yeah, yeah. But then again, but then again, when I was in 2021, when I was just like chilling at home doing nothing, I was still screaming worlds teams just to help. Yeah, yeah. And we were doing the team with leader. We we're playing as EDG and we beat them. That's pretty good. Oh yeah. That was, that was a pretty bold. Um, well, I guess I guess team. I guess we give we gave practice to the wrong team though. <laughs> but then again, you didn't make it very far, so we couldn't give them good practice. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, if they did, we could have. Okay. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I remember because because I was at the World Finals 2018 because uh, they were, like brought me on an analyst desk and like, oh, you did a cool interview, so we need a new <laughs> European. So they just flew me in. I was on the analyst desk, and then after I was at the after party and. Like I'm there with the Fnatic players, and like everyone's there except Caps, and people were just so giga triggered too, you know, because they did. Uh, let's uh, to to put it mildly, they also did a bunch of dumb shit, right? They had like they don't play Sion. It's like oh, yeah, the shy played Sion, it's like, <laughs> yeah. and then it's like oh they picked Sion. Oh, we can only play Jin. <laughs> shit, we have Jin. <laughs> <laughs> we have Jin already, <laughs> and then it was like. Apparently, after that uh, first game, after that first game, because it's like Caps played like Irelia, and he he didn't he didn't get like a single moment to breathe. He was playing like Irelia against Rise, I believe. And then it's like after that game, Caps was like, "We I need to pick to scale. We we are not playing to be too mid. We we cannot match them. We can't fight them." And then the conversation was that in that moment, someone should have like fought back against it. And it's like I remember like. Uh, uh, like someone told, like I was just there, like sipping my fucking, you know, like these after parties. They like yeah, have like themed yeah. drinks. I was drinking my mana potion. I was just sitting there, like because <laughs> it's like these are the people that I know. And, and then like reckless, I don't know. It's like yeah, Yamato should have been there. I'm like no, 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 don't bring me into this, bro. Like, <laughs> I, like I don't know what the fuck went on, you know. Uh, it's like there yeah. was a fucking big fucking. It just exploded in the room. I'm like shit, man. I shouldn't be here. I was like fucking sliding, going slow, slowly out of frame, you know, like. <laughs> the whole gang was there. It was like, it was like the caps was like. Uh, apparently, like Caps said, we can't play two v two. I need to pick scaling champ. Pick me Victor, and I will farm. Because <laughs> uh, fucking IG two v two mid, Oof. Then yeah. the fucking level three meta. You know, you take Raptor and Crab, and then you get level three, and then GG. So <laughs> was, uh, was was a different time. Uh, Holy like Camille meta. Fucking Caps went through two world finals. Holy. Yeah. Crazy. 2020, the caps going AD. How, how oh, yeah. was how, how, how did everything go down from like Perks aside? Was it was it uh, was it a decision that came out of him missing mid lane, or was this like a strategic decision to just see like how it would work? Would you would you guys be better? How, how did everything think, come about? I, mean, I think he kind of wanted to play mid lane, mm -hmm. but also usually how like. People want to make it like fresh, so people usually make roster changes. But okay. our decision to make it fresh was to just roll swap because it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And we were pretty confident that we we're gonna win anyway. Um, and I mean, I think we already talked about it during 2019 Worlds. Okay. Like about roll swap, how cool it would be if we could just like swap like mm. roles just like randomly, like in, like in the game. Yeah, yeah. And then then that idea kind of came to be in 2020. Okay. Like imagine like one guy just practices like only Zaya, Kaisa, something, and the other guy plays like only Senna, Aphelios, like the new champs, I guess. Okay. And then we just like whenever face a the draft, then we just put that guy on that on that champion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um so yeah, that could be fun. But sounds uh, like a lot of work yeah. though. <laughs> yeah. I mean in the end we didn't actually go for that, but we just actually rose up like Perma. So mm -hmm. they both played everything anyway. Um, and yeah, at the start, I mean, it was funny to play with Caps because he would just like try to win the lane on his own. Usually, AD carries are like, sitting back and waiting for the support to do something, but Caps would randomly try to like walk up and try to auto space and then get like CC'd and then die. And like, ah, oh, sucks. So, he would try a lot of like solo stuff at the start, okay. and then we were like, I mean, it was still very fun because we just played like random shit again, like, we just played like everything. Um, I remember we played a lot of Talia Thresh. That shit was OP. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, but then after that infamous zero nine Aphelios game, uh, <laughs> he decided that we're never leashing again because okay. you know me. If my jungle asked me to leash, I said sure, I can leash. Yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> he's like, it must be good for him, right? And I'm not gonna lose my lane because I'm leashing. So yeah, I'm like, yeah. why not? 
Um, and Camps wasn't having any of that, so it's like never leashing again. And if any malicious, we're gonna dive their bot lane. So every single, <laughs> so we made like a thing. Where we're like, oh, we have to kill the king, like in chess pieces. So okay. the AD carry is the king, so we have to kill him. So every time we just like enemy is leashing. Oh, we're diving this, and then I would always dive one for one. But I'm just a pawn, so it doesn't matter. We get pawn for <laughs> for a king. It's worth. So then, yeah. After that, we started playing better, a bit more disciplined. Um, and then yeah, in the finals, I guess we did the Kogma Lulu thing. That was kind of funny as well because Frederick was just like blind picking Ophelia's thumb. So we just yeah, picked yeah. Kogma Lulu, and then it was free win. And then I played Jana as well because I had Zach and stuff. I guess I was playing Enchanters, kind of like in this finals, actually. Yeah, you guys were a bit deep in their head. That was that was a series when they dropped the Cassidy in the end on game three, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> or in Zach reverse matchup both solo kill. Yeah, yeah. Wonder Wonder had Bupo's number. That was. Uh... A good series. That was after you guys went five games against them, right? That was, uh, was it? Uh, they did a game five as well when they picked like Akali and Wonder played like Kled Top. I don't know. I remember this through the lens of Wonder only. Which one? There was like a, you guys played against Fnatic that uh, that uh, that same playoffs, or am I remembering wrong? That when it went to five mm. games. Yeah, we lost that. I think when they went to lose a bracket. I think. Like 2020. 2020? You guys uh, lost to Matt, yeah. and then you went through loser bracket. Okay, yeah. so you only beat Fnatic. And once. then in summer, and then in summer we lost to Fnatic, and then we won against him. The end. Okay, okay, okay. And that was the game where, well, actually, what were we playing? I don't remember. Yeah, basically we lost against them. I remember mm -hmm. that self-made at that point, and they were very happy when they won against us. <laughs> but makes sense. You guys were <laughs> yeah. were the guys to beat for sure. That's true, yeah. I um. I in in terms of and then like moving into summer, you guys went back to to the OG setup with Caps mid and then and then, then Perks AD again. Well, what was the driving yeah. force like? What was the conclusion like? Did you guys just think this was the best way forward? Moving into the World mm. Championship. A good question. I don't remember. I think Caps actually just see me at playing AD carry anymore. <laughs> so okay. <they> back to mid. <laughs> That's kind of how it went. I don't actually remember. Okay. Probably something like that. Hmm. Because like, he didn't like playing solo queue because he had to play with like when he plays solo, he had to play with random supports if he can't play duo queue or mm -hmm. if he don't play duo queue. So then he didn't like that. Then yeah. he wanted to play mid lane because okay. it's like the spam solo queue, right? Makes sense. How, <laughs> how do you feel? Like, I, I feel like after 2019, you guys were like a top contender. I, I feel like always when it comes to uh, the Korean teams and the Chinese teams, I think they do a very, very good job of actually like studying whoever did the best in the previous year to try to extract what they can. Um, yeah. For me, on my end, like, because I was in Korea, I could notice it's like screaming against Damwon, their approach was very, very different, right? It's like um, they tried things a lot. Like, Battle was a fucking scientist. They were trying things, like, screaming against them. Uh, they were always, like, throwing, like, a bunch of shit at the wall, seeing what fucking works out. And it was very, very tough to, like, uh, follow along. Uh, they, they added a lot of steps into their. Um, the scheduling, I remember also hearing that they are doing like meditation and they're doing a lot of things that a lot of the other Korean teams didn't do as, as, uh, as of course, 2020 was when like down one and like the Griffins and so forth, like these players that came from Challenger series began to be uh, more and more uh, established. Like moving into 2020, do you feel like uh, you guys got worse or do you feel like that everything else around you just kind of caught up to you in a, in a way because you guys were such outliers in 2019 in your approach to the game yeah um i mean for me i felt like we got worse okay but also 2020 i was not a very fun year for me with the whole corona starting and everything yeah, yeah. but at least talking to caps the caps thought we were actually much better in 2020 than 2019 okay which i can't really remember too much or like i don't have any strong opinion about it i thought we were just like fine like in 20 20 spring i felt like we were actually quite good so if we went to msi at that point because it got cancelled right but if we went mm -hmm. to msi i felt like we would actually do very very good okay but then i think yeah i mean i think we were fine i don't think we were like better than 2019 necessarily like going to worlds and stuff but then again i don't know i was kind of out of it that year so okay it was a very, very strange year. Very, yeah. very weird. 
Like you guys, I remember the video of you guys hoisting the trophy in your fucking back room. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so stupid. That's a bit, yeah. uh, bit of a strange <laughs> one for sure. I, I can imagine. Yeah. I, I, I casted your series that you lost against Mad Lions in my yeah. underwear in my <laughs> PC room. <laughs> yes. I was just chilling in my underwear, casting. I, I believe with, with with quick shot. That was like the only best of five I I've ever casted. It was um, a bad year <laughs> oh, to yeah. choose to go freelancing. <laughs> yeah, actually, a funny story from that from that best of five was like usually in G two twenty nineteen mm -hmm. we were very good at making excuses okay. when we lost. So like <laughs> during that point, for like, when Corona started, we started playing our official matches from the of facility like the yeah, office yeah. in berlin it's for like change of environment so it's like going to like going to stage you know it's kind of similar vibes yeah, yeah. and then we played there and then we lost our first best of five ever we had the fpx one of course <laughs> and then we were like what the fuck? why are we playing here when we practice and scrim from home all the time and we have these like <laughs> tables were like shaky and like everything was like wrong and, like and the whole environment was different like what the fuck are we thinking and then, of course, we go back, scrimmed back from home, and then we went out like, yeah, see? I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, yeah. We had, like, the most crazy excuses. Oh, yeah, also, during that time, we, like, me and Caps ordered, like, I don't know, some greasy food. I was, like, burger or something, or I don't know what you ordered. But we usually ordered, like, whatever we want, you know? It's, like, not like we did anything different before. Yeah, yeah. But during during that series after, we were, like, what the fuck are we ordering greasy food, guys? Like, what is this? <laughs> like, it's unacceptable. <laughs> So after that, we stopped doing that. <laughs> but it was just like funny that yeah, every, everything was a problem except our gameplay. Nice. So, yeah. That's yeah, kind of how we cope with everything. Sometimes funny, a though. bit of superstition goes a long way, you know. It's, it's like, true, yeah. You, you cannot, um, like if you blame something that maybe is outside of your control in the short term, you don't want to lose lose confidence, yeah, yeah. you know. Sometimes a yeah. bit of delusion <laughs> can help. Delusion keeps with people going, yeah. yeah, yeah. Also, during between, in between best of fives, it's always like, if you lose, it's like, ah, shit draft, let's go next. <laughs> 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 Unplayable. Nice. <laughs> nice. So that's why, that's why I grabbed together a bit of flame every now and again. But he was good at taking it, so. Yeah. <laughs> it seemed to be... Um... Uh, like, I guess I don't need to speculate. I can just ask you, what, what was <laughs> so, so? You work, you work with Duff and Mac then grabs in the, in terms of his role. Like, I guess he just had to keep you guys on a theoretical leash to some degree. How would yeah. you describe his his role? Because I yeah, imagine I mean, you for... guys could go wild sometimes in your idea making. For sure, yeah. I think grabs was pretty good at just like leading the conversation about what we should actually talk about so if reviews went like south when caps and perks uh, yeah, caps and perks had this ego battle mm. about like who's right who's wrong usually caps would be good at stopping that and just making sure we reach a good conclusion most of the time caps and perks i think their f f most famous phrase is like let's agree to disagree <laughs> <Because> <laughs> and then just go next <laughs> so usually there's not like any conclusions or compromises because mm. they're both quite stubborn but uh yeah, and then I think drafts, I think he was actually pretty good at them. I think a lot of times we kind of griefed and drafts ourselves because we wanted to play something weird or wanted to try some, I don't know, mind game in draft or something. So we mm. ended up with like full AP. I mean, of course, Grabs could have prevented that. So then, of course, it's always on him. But uh, <laughs> he was not, he, it was not easy for him to just be like, no, we're not doing this. And then. Uh, yeah, I think over that, other than that, I think he was good at actually knowing, like, or remembering all the stuff we tell him about, okay. like, specific matchups or just, like, how we want to play a specific way. Mm. Because a lot of people have this problem where you tell them something a week or a month later, they would forget that that's how it goes. So we have yeah, to yeah. keep repeating it. But the gap is very good at just, like, insta registering it and remembering and then bringing it up at a later point when someone has, like, a counterpoint or like if in a game we do something wrong he will bring it up about oh yeah we talked about this like last week or two weeks ago and then mm. now you guys are doing that so he was pretty good at that as well and just like game knowledge wise he was actually not bad i think um yeah i guess that was kind of his job yeah so he kept you guys uh, grounded and kept you guys honest too it's, uh, yeah it's very, very important much. very important it was it was pretty difficult with the personalities we have but yeah Everyone was very, uh, I don't know, stubborn in their own ways. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that's that's super teams, right? 
Yeah, I guess, yeah. That is super teams. Yeah. Players that are That's good true. and usually like most players that are good uh, are come come with some stubbornness, right? It's like they True. It's it's, it's a part of part of the gig, you know, because if you don't <laughs> have that level of confidence, usually people don't make it super super far, but uh, I think uh, it, it's it, from everything that you've told me and everything that I've heard. It seems like in the end, you guys had a good balance of of personalities, you know, enough yeah. enough okay. initiative in the process and, and and people that were bought in uh, to to what yeah. you guys were doing. I mean, I was also kind of lucky that everyone was just very similar, like yes, similar minded. I guess like yeah. we had similar mindset about how we want to like deal with losses or just like how we want to approach scrims or just like everything. Everyone, I mean, it was just basically a lot of good friends. Like, it never felt like work, basically. Mm. Everyone was just very close with each other. We were just doing, like, team activities all the time. Playing board games, I don't know, playing Magic, going out, whatever. Um, yeah, I think that was a very important part as well, because then also it felt easier to just talk about anything. I think a very, oh yeah, another very important part is that that I also wanted to bring to whatever team I was going to join like before G2 that mm -hmm. remain also had the same idea was having a team meeting before the split starts or before the year mm -hmm. about just like expectations and all that because that's what we had in 2019 which I think was very important mm -hmm. so we all know how they like how our teammates would react or what they would want other teammates to do in like situations where we lose or like whatever um, so then everyone's on the same page when the stuff actually happens mm -hmm. so yeah I think that was very good I think I, th I think oh, I agree fully. It's so so important. I, I think it, the idea of what it means to be like a teammate or a pro player, like people have very very different views, and in 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 some cases, like if if you just let it happen, sometimes like you 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 begin to build resentment because someone is acting a certain way that they believe is right. It's like usually in teams, yep. no one has like ill intentions. Like sometimes there's yep. been players that have ill intentions, but it's very rare. Like everyone wants to win. In their own yeah. way, but if you like put your energy in opposite direction, this this always builds resentment, and then scrap practice just becomes something that you want to uh, to to avoid. Like that was definitely yeah. like a big challenge of ours back in 2022, because like I, we had a group of players. It's like our off season, we didn't practice at all because we couldn't because of some contract shit, whatever the fuck. <laughs> the season started, and then you know you're just in the midst of it, and we didn't take any time to like uh, settle things down, and then. When you finally get some time, you're kind of working backwards because a lot of things are already in place and people have kind of made up their mind about each other. When, yeah, that's true. When in reality, it's like that group of players, it's like we had Upset Hilly and then we had Humanoid, Wunder, and then Razor. It's like everyone had, uh, like Humanoid just won two splits the, pre the previous year, uh, Hilly and Upset had success in Bodle in the previous year, and then Wunder, of course, Wunder, yeah, goes without saying, and then Razor was uh, like a standout player on Misfits. And it's like everyone came from so different environments, so different ideas of how things uh, uh, needed to be done. So, uh, like if 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 you go through that process without actually exploring things that are going to happen, it's like you're going to lose, you're going to win, you're going to scrim. Some there's going to be scrims with people in, there's going to be scrims where the enemy ends. It's like how do you manage all these things to to establish that is 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 super super important. Uh, yeah. Fully agree with this uh, with, with this notion. Crazy that you guys already did it in, in, in 2019. I guess it was mm -hmm. just um, kind of natural because uh, yeah. you guys were experienced at that idea. point and the best uh, GM that uh, Europe has ever had in terms of scouting perks <laughs> 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 knew what he wanted. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> no, that's cool. Moving into the off season, you know, I, I was joining Fnatic and I was like, I was just talking with Reckless in that off season. It's like, yo, Reckless. Uh, he was just holding Europe by the balls. You know, everyone was waiting for his decision uh, yeah. for how 2021 20, would play out because all ladies were just waiting in line to take the position that he wouldn't take because he was just deciding between uh, Fnatic and G2. In the, in the process of that offseason, uh, I, I remember it was quite, quite the terminus, you know, the whole situation with Perks and, 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 yeah. and, and the situation with mid lane. Uh, I don't know how much you can share about that off season, but looking back at that, I think there was uh, there's a chapter that I'm really curious about because I only saw it from my side. It's like I spent a lot of time with Reckless just playing normal games because uh, yeah. like we were just talking in Swedish, I guess like that opened kind of like uh, 
Like let's say it's like when you speak with your native language, you kind of feel comfortable in a way, right? It's like yeah, it kind of brings you back in a way. And 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 we just, I was just spending time with him. I didn't want to put pressure on him because it didn't make sense. Like we wanted him to join Fnatic because he obviously like that was just top esports year. Like uh, Reckless and Hilly were like popping off completely, right? Yeah. How was it on on your side of the aisle? Yeah, I guess it was kind of similar. We saw them Smurf against Top. We were like, okay, Reckless is probably the best performing AD mm-hmm. this year. I think we were still like a little bit skeptical about like how he would fit into the team, mm-hmm. I guess. But then we also thought that since it's like a new environment and everything, he would probably just have to adapt to us, and okay. it'll be fine because we have a good structure and everything. Um, I think he was not number one option though. I think we were trying to go for like Karzi Hans first. I think. Okay. But that couldn't happen, and then we're talking about Miro swapping. That was kind of funny. Oh, shit. I remember that, yeah. <laughs> but then when we mentioned it to Jankos, he just started laughing. Mm-hmm. Then I was like, oh, I guess we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I was also playing a lot of normal games with Reki. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, like, every day. So that was fun. I was uh, playing with everyone then, man. I thought it was special. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was just, like, spamming normal games in the offseason. And then when we started talking about, like, joining, then I guess... We started playing more and more. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. Then joined. That was kind of it, yeah. Okay, okay. And the, the whole situation, like like Perks and Caps, they both wanted to play mid. There was no no run back. G2 run back, that wasn't like on the table. Um, I mean, it was kind of weird where Luca kind of wanted to go to Fnatic, I think. Yeah, yeah. But then someone didn't allow him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So then I guess he was forced to go somewhere else. I mean, I didn't mind, like, either way, like, whatever Luca wanted to do. Um, but I think, yeah, I'm not sure how much I can go into detail, but, yeah, it turns out that he couldn't come back, and then he went to NA, yeah. Okay. Okay, we, we, we leave it at that. I will not... <laughs> yeah. I will not press further. <laughs> I want to mention it just to pat my own back, like... In in the down years of Mickey, I, I my teams beat him in a best of five. Twenty twenty one, I got twenty twenty one. We got to the world championship, beat out G two. Twenty eighteen, beat out Misfits, and then got the worlds in twenty twenty two. The following year, twenty twenty two, you mentioned already X camp, the reverse sweep. <laughs> <laughs> that series That's was mental. <laughs> Wonder Gragas, you guys are pushing our Nexus. <laughs> was so free when man, you guys were getting so stumped. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, we, we were yeah. getting kind of fucked. I remember both sides. Yo Sejuani was level three ganking us, and we couldn't stop dying to it. And <laughs> we needed to piece it together. And uh, I had to convince our bot lane to restructure our Yumi priority. <laughs> hey, whose idea was it to not ban my Yumi? I was like mega abusing Yumi the whole split, and then Yumi was open like almost every game. I was like, uh, I, I I don't recall that specific series. I think like we didn't we didn't buy into Nyla at all. So it's like oh, okay. I remember it was like like Zeri was removed, and then I believe like I, I think we got like the the better Yumi AD we perceived, and then uh, like I think you played Twitch Yumi one game, and we played Lulu something. It's like we we I think that well, did you guys play Zeri Lulu? I think we played. Um, you guys first picked Zeri when Lulu Yumi was open because that was like the, the trade, right? And then it was like be, yeah. it was like Lucia Nami or you went Yumi Twitch, and that was yeah. like basically like the the, the circle, right? It's so like we were very yeah. happy to play Lucian side of things, and I think that like we we ended up playing Lucian Nami, I believe, into your Nyla, right? Because Nyla was Nyla like, Yumi yeah. picked into in, into Lucian, and we were very happy with that. It's like a big concern we won, of we won those games. We did, yeah, yeah, you did, you did. I think we won one game against Nyla, if I remember correctly. That was like game four or five already. I was yeah, surprised yeah. that after two games of losing to Yumi, you guys just like, I guess you first picked a nice game, but then we were blue again, I think, and then you just left it open. I was like, what the fuck? But then I lost to Yumi. So it was like, yeah, it sucks. I don't remember if it was, uh, like, I don't remember specifically the prep against you guys, but a big concern of ours was that, um, especially like moving into World Championship, is that we, we were not a good Lulu team. Like, we couldn't mm-hmm. play Lulu. And um, basically, like, at Worlds, it's like we we left Yumi open because we really we really wanted to be in a situation where we have the Lushanami side. We just love Lushanami, and it, the issue was if if we banned Yumi on red, was that Lushanami is open and we didn't want to play Lulu. So like we would uh, just have to like go deeper into the bands. And if you don't play Lulu into Lucian back then, it was like Lula Felios, 
and yeah. and Lulu Zeri, right? Then you could just like FF straight up, right? It's like there was. Did you guys play a lot of Lulu Zeri? Like I remember when you guys actually qualified for the playoffs, it was the one where like uh, upset was like two v eighting on Zeri. Uh, this the, was uh, the this was the next year. Uh, oh, right. Actually, actually, no, no, no. It was the same year. We did play Zeri Lulu. Yeah. I think it was. Um, hmm. Maybe just changed during the World Championship. Because during the World Championship, yeah. we didn't want to play Lulu. It stopped, I guess. We, we, just, we yeah. just stopped. It was good in Europe, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I, I was also surprised that Hilly was playing Lulu. I think that was the first year he started playing like more ranged stuff. Before he was always playing just melees. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's just one of those questions. It's like, I, I, I think Hilly as a player, and maybe you can relate to this, it's like, if... If the game is not moving in a direction where he believes is winning, he's going to take it in his own hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think that in I usually like in the past, like if 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 Hilly was not like was was like inting, then usually it was kind of just highlighting that the team is dysfunctional at that point in time. Because he's yeah. trying to fill a void that he shouldn't be filling, you know? Yeah. He's fucking R flashing with fucking Lulu, you know? Yeah. And just to, yeah, yeah. To, to get the fight starting because he believes <laughs> that we should be fighting now because we're stronger or something like this, right? But I yeah. think that when we were playing well, then all of these things were in place, then he could he could take it easy and it didn't feel like, oh, me playing Yumi or Lulu is, is necessarily like, like a bad thing, you know, for him, you know, because he could believe that uh, the things that maybe you would miss out on him playing Lulu, Yumi would still be in place, right? I think this is how, like, Hilly, Hilly functions, you know? I think... That makes sense. I think when he when he was like in tune with the game and he he felt like because because we also I remember like at the twenty twenty one best of five I hate to uh, bring it up again but he, like you guys play like Sivir Brom it's like a fucking pick me Lulu I was like are you sure you're gonna play Lulu I like, just fucking play Lulu then <laughs> he's locked oh, yeah. Lulu we played like Lulu Tristana I remember that game yeah that was the game where we played Yasuo Diana uh, yes yes we had TF you played Diaso Diana. Yeah. <laughs> so you're shaking your head. <laughs> that was crazy, yeah. Because after that game, he was like, I don't know, I think I think it was Jankos. He said like, I never want to play fucking three losing lanes again because we were getting pushed in and he got invaded and he got yeah, fucked. Yeah, yeah. Even though we were like, perhaps playing Yasu Diana. So then Yasu Diana was off the table mm. against TF because we got invaded. And then, yeah, I guess we started playing Oriana into TF, which kind of worked. But then again, it was still TF. Mm. He was still OP after, after lane, and then what the fuck did we play bot lane? I think I was I was just blind picking Brom. Yeah, you were blind picking I think, Brom. Play I think Brom. <laughs> we had we had yeah we had this idea that we just pick for mid three v three, so whatever is strongest. So I just pick the Brom every time, just blind pick that shit. Mm. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, we lost. Yeah, we got that game five uh, twisted fate. We, we oh yeah, some... actually, I was playing Gragas last game, right, or some shit. Shit, I don't remember what you played. Yeah, I think I played Gragas into Leona. And when I was playing Camille versus Darius, and solo killed him and then got solo killed back. Oh, yeah. And then he went downhill. <laughs> yeah. What a shit. That's what I series. remember. Yeah. Fun for me. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. 2022, yeah. and then moving into 2023. It's like the, the whole. Um, Situation with with uh, with with G two, you know, you were in contract jail, but you got uh, released. <laughs> Excel bought you out, and it was of course yeah. a smart move. Like I, I I I was I was in awe that I got got Wunder out. You know, like that Wunder was like a possibility. Sure, yeah. It's like I was like, damn, <laughs> I, I can get Wunder. <laughs> Wunder yeah. is available here, man. Like, let, me, let, me get, let me get some Wunder. So we, we tried <laughs> to put some magic behind the scene because like they didn't want to give us Wunder the same thing. You know, it's always the fucking fanatic thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But we had to. We, we were trying to piece uh, together a masterpiece uh, behind the scene. But in the end, they 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 let up. Fucking Dardo, yeah. Dardo made it happen. It was uh, <laughs> La Formula got got wounded out, and it was uh, it was yeah. uh, pretty based. Then eventually you got out, and now you're back in G two. Yeah. But no a water under the bridge. It's just business. pretty much yeah. Pretty much. Well, I guess there was a a big change in G two that allowed me to come back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd probably still be not in G2. <laughs> okay. Damn. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Very I mean, interesting. Because yeah. I figured, yeah. you know, it's think... like if uh, if someone comes knocking at your door and they're like, yo, look at this roster, caps, blah, 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 you know. The oh, I wouldn't be up to me. 
<laughs> I think that someone will have a bit of a personal grudge. Okay. That wouldn't allow me to join again. But okay. I'll, I'll be like, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. okay. I mean, I, I guess it depends. Depends what other options would be. But yeah. So now we are in 2023. This, yeah. this this year, you guys, uh, we, we mentioned, I mentioned the Ash Heimerdinger, you guys were smurfing mm-hmm. on everybody, bowling, you know, you were backing up Yike to invade, he was playing his graves and so forth, and you guys were dominating, yeah. and then you played a fucking best of five against Mad Lions, where you guys got Gragas, fucking, they had their <laughs> one, two, three figured out to to the T, the Vi and the Gragoon. <laughs> yeah. I guess that series is a, is a series that haunts you, but uh, moving That's into... And you guys got your revenge at uh, MSI, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the MSI was, uh, I imagine, like a bit of a wake up call. You guys got to face up against uh, the Asian teams. It never, it, yeah. it, it's always a wake up call, you know. It's like you never get used to it. It seems. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, at that point, I thought we were actually like so good, mm-hmm. and we can for sure win against everyone. I mean, uh, I, I always believe we can win against everyone, but like. <laughs> I was like, yeah, they don't, they don't seem that good. Like, because I watched their games, I was like, yeah, we could probably win that. They mm. don't seem that insane. But then after the Genji series, we actually realized just how behind we were mm. in terms of just like actually doing something with waves. Because I think that was the first conversation we ever had about like what we should actually do with the waves. Before we just like kind of play autopilot, you know, mm. don't really do much. But in the Genji series, I noticed we just like went mid. Push the wave and then we just sit in the river, like not doing anything. We just like yeah. sit in the bush or something. And then the next wave comes and then we just do it again. Not really progressing the game or like making our side lanes have like an easier time. We were just basically AFK. Mm. We didn't know our timings as well. So after that, we kind of started talking about it. So that made it better. But then I guess against BLG, I mean, that one was like, wait, did we win a game there? Or did we get 2 0 I forgot. I remember the last game we played like Broma Filios versus Lushanami. That was a rough one. Uh, I think we won a game though. I forgot which one it was though. You you won a game. Yeah. You, you you won three and one against Genji, right? You guys took a game of Genji, or am I remembering wrong? I think Genji was a two zero. No, actually no. Because it was just best that's of fives, I must say. Yeah, that's Worlds actually. Like wait, so there was an ASOL game. There was. Oh, the first game we played Draven against them. Actually, that game was looking good, but then... Yeah, yeah, BG. you guys had a massive lead. <laughs> yeah, we got tipped behind. Sucks. That game was free win as well. The, the guys were playing fucking Fiora. Like, it was so free. If you yeah, just don't yeah. die to that team there. And then... Yeah, I forgot. Actually, I, I just deleted it from my memory. But yeah, <laughs> after that, it was like a good wake-up call. That would actually kind of suck. And then... Yeah, it was it was helpful to start working even harder for summer. Mm-hmm. And then I felt like we kind of stomped summer, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. I would say you did, yeah. Um, and Montpellier was pretty easy as well. And then, yeah, I guess Worlds was another wake-up call. <laughs> what happened at Worlds yeah. from, your, from, from your point of view? Mm, okay, so first, when we won the best of ones against Damon mm-hmm. and against... Uh, Weibo, I was Close like, holy fuck, games. We're, actu- we're actually gonna, we're actually, we actually win this because even when we are like behind in the mm-hmm. game, we still, we still find a way to come back. Yeah, yeah. So if we just play normal and get leads early, we're just gonna stop them. Mm. Because usually we were winning early, like every, like most of our scrims, we were just like winning early and then enemy team would FF because a lot of Asian teams just like FF at five minutes and just like ask for remake or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I guess, um, so on stage, I guess the first game against Damon, we were like smurfing early, pretty good leads, and then we throw at Baron. So I was like, okay, fine, let's all throw at Baron again. Then against Weibo, I think we were winning early, kinda. And then we throw at Baron again, and we're like, oh shit, guys, like we need to just chill the fuck out. If we don't, th- if we don't troll at Nash, we're just gonna win every game. Hmm. And then, who did we play? I believe did we played Genji uh, after that. We played Genji, because the yeah. they were two zero. We were two zero. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then that game, I was playing the Lissandra, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that game, I also think it was like, it was winnable for sure, like draft wise. But we were just playing kind of bad. We were kind of choking a lot. And they were like 4v5 against. I remember at top tower we were hitting, they just won a 4v5. Like, Jax and Silent just went 2v4 and just actually killed us all. I was like, okay, I guess. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that, that first initial game was, 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 was close, I remember. Yeah. Um, 
And then, what was the fucking second game? The second game, I, I, I think that uh, there was like 2v2 on mid that just lost the whole game, I think, instantly. But I don't remember mm. what was played. I think in the first game, Caps played Tristan, right? And then... Oh, we were playing Lucian. We were playing Lucian Nautilus versus Zyra Khan. Yeah, yeah. You guys could 2v2 and... kill them, no? Yeah, we killed them, yeah. And uh, like we, were th we thought Lucian was actually good because most of the scrims... We like played a lot of Lucian because it was like Callista Draven, Lucian. I guess we played some Ezreal as well. Yeah, yeah. Because like Lucian was actually very strong early because they just changed this passive so it works with uh, yeah, CC. CC. Yeah. So we just played with like Nautilus or like Rakan or whatever mm. or Brom even. And it was looking actually really good. We like always won lane. He was scaling well when he had like an Avori crack and he was actually smurfing. But then in the stage game, it was kind of useless. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> he just did the damage. And that's also when people started playing a lot of Zyra Khan, and we didn't really play Zyra Khan before that. So then a whole, whole prior changed. And then we started playing more hyper carries like Kaisa, Zaya, I guess I played Tristana as well, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that kind of changed. And then we were not winning bot lane as much because before we were always like pushing bot. Yeah, yeah. With like the Lucians, the Ezreal, Draven, Callista. So now we're getting pushed in a lot. So that kind of also changed how we play the game. So we couldn't really snowball as well early and win the early games. And we also didn't know how to play mid game. So then we just lost. Yeah. <laughs> and then the games were like kind of stumps. I mean, against energy as well, we were just like actually stupid in draft because they gave us like so, like their drafts were very exploitable. But okay. we just kind of picked for like our lane matchups more than the game. Maybe because this is like, I don't know, but just like, I guess we made a lot of bad decisions in drafts firstly. And then in the game, we just played like mega scared, didn't want to do anything. We didn't know how to play objectives as well, especially game two versus energy. We were first a Drake and then they just walk in, they don't lose anything, they just take over and they just kill us. So we're like, okay. And like during the series or like during the worlds, I didn't realize that was actually even a problem. Like I didn't, I never knew how fucking bad we were at retaking or like playing objectives. Yeah, yeah. Because usually in scrims we don't do that. Usually in scrims we stomp and then we stomp our head. We just get every Drake, you know. We don't have to yeah, actually yeah. fight for it, or we just stomp them when they actually come. But they were even. It was a bit harder, and they actually just played well, like much better than I expected at least. So yeah, then BLG series, uh, game one. What the fuck this happened game one? Oh, they had we have Kogmo, Kogmo Brom versus Milio Zaya. I mean that one was a bit of a BG because they had Milio versus Brom and yeah, Maokai, yeah. I think. And we were thinking about banning it because I think Fnatic just played the series before us and they picked Milio. And no one really played Milio before that. Yeah, yeah. So then I was thinking in terms of like we could ban Milio, but no one actually plays it except Fnatic played it today. Mm. So like maybe he doesn't play it, you know. And it's not very good with Zaya as well. I was like it's fine, we can just leave it open. And then they kind of picked it, and then it was a bit hard. And Bin Jax was also like pretty good. And a Brom versus Jax, a Brom Kogbo versus Jax is also like a bit scary, or like not good. Yeah, yeah. So, so that game was rough. It was still winnable, I think. We just like I misplayed a lot again. Game two, we did the Nico thing with the Cattle Minion. That was funny. <laughs> that was something we and Caps were thinking about. We pulled it out. So that was fun to do. Um,. I was playing Lissandra that game. Oh my god. Oh, I was mega choking. The ages. I remember. Yeah, but I was mega choking the whole game. Like, I couldn't cancel the Rakan W for some reason. Okay. And I was just getting caught perma. <laughs> but then at some point, I was like, yeah, I just went on a flank because there's nothing else I could do. You were chilling in the, in the fucking like, enemy blue buff for like yeah. two, three minutes. I was just vibing, yeah. I was doing this then. <laughs> and then the Caps was getting caught on button. I was like, oh shit, it's fucking doomed. But then they actually didn't see me. <laughs> So then Zeri walked up to me. I think he had no cleanse, and then we just one shot him. Yeah, I think yeah. Nocturne as well. And then, we, but yeah, this game is mega fucking sweaty as well. Mm. And the next game, oh my god, I picked Bard. Why did I pick Bard? They picked Brom blind. Yeah. yeah. And they had Kaisa as well. No, they had Ash. Ash, Ash. And yeah. Oriana and Jarvan. And I had Kaisa. So with Kaisa, it makes sense to pick something aggressive. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know why I picked Bard with Kaisa. Usually, you want to play Bard with like hyper carries or like range stuff. So this is up on to your Oriana first pick, right? So it's like yeah. Oriana, Ash, Azir. Brom. It makes yeah. sense to some degree, game, right, Bard? But I was thinking, Bard, it, I was thinking I picked Pike. <laughs> yeah, because like Bard is good into Ash and Oriana yeah, individually, yeah. or Ed Bard, but it's not good with Kaisa. Mm. And also our follow-up was not great. But if I pick Pike that game, I think we might just win it, because I remember we got level 1 innovated, and we got like 2v5 yeah, by yeah. Brom Ash. He's not playing fucking Bard. And <laughs> <as fuck. laughs> so that was a BG. 
But yeah, I was mostly picking Bart because in scrims, whenever enemy team had Bart and we had like Oriana and a Mobile Lady, we yeah. always like get ulted and they get one shot. Mm. But that didn't, that's not how quite how it went in our game. <laughs> and I also was thinking like, whenever I pick Bart on stage, I always win. I'm like, I had like really good win rate, so I'm gonna mega smurf this game, bar game. Yeah, I didn't really work that way. And I was not very confident in my pike as well back then. Okay. Because there was one one game in scrim where I picked pike because I really wanted to make pike work as I was spamming as well as solo queue and winning. Mm-hmm. And the one pike game in scrim, I pick it versus Alistar. Free fucking lane, right? Yeah, yeah. Guess what happens? I die level one. Like, ah, I, I was like, after that, I think I went like zero five or something. It was FF. I was like, yeah, I'm never playing that shit again. <laughs> But yeah, I should probably pick it there. We could have probably won. But I mean, we were too bad anyway to get much further than that. So yeah, so that kind of it, yeah. If, if, you had a, if you had a time machine, right? It's like you, you wake up, first day of uh, World's Prep, you just arrived to whatever bootcamp location you have. What, what are the main things that you would, uh, you would then change? Because it sounds like the, the, like the misunderstanding of your preparation put you guys last in like, year? a deep hole. Yeah, yeah last year. I mean, I think the most important one, I would just like copy paste all the Duff presentations from okay. my head. And then we would actually <laughs> have a chance to win. Okay. Despite the draft. Um, yeah, I mean, besides that, I guess play more Zyro Khan. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think. I mean, the drafts were like, I think we weren't that far off. Also, I think people forget that no one really actually played Kalista before yeah. Worlds. But then we kind of stomped everyone, so then everyone started probably banning it or picking it. Yeah, yeah. And then also the thing was that after the whole our after we went out, that the meta became like virus and like pushing lanes and aggressive lanes early instead of hyper carries. Yeah. So if yeah. we just like actually stick to what we're good at, we could just pick that and probably we would have done better. But yeah, I guess that's for something I would also include in my presentation if I would go back in time. Okay. Okay. Because um... we're very good at virus. I remember that. Okay, so so this is what what G two and Mickey are bringing with themselves to the twenty twenty four World Championship. Very far far away from there still. I guess <laughs> MSI is also the the, yeah. in the international tournament that is coming up. But I guess this is what you what you what you're bringing with you. MSI, you know, you mentioned the LEC level doesn't look that great. You said that you still yeah. feel confident after the boot camp. Like, yeah. Um, uh, you, how, how do you feel coming into MSI? Because I guess but the main question is like, how do you feel about watching LCK and 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 the LPL? They are sending yeah. some some demons, right? It's like the MSI format is 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 very brutal. There's, yeah. there's no I mean, skirting around it. When I was watching the finals live, or like I was watching a few of the games, I think mm-hmm. game one was like pretty pretty clean by Genji. I felt like they were doing some good swaps or like lane assignments and shit. Yeah, I was yeah. like, holy fuck, they're pretty good. And then, yeah, just like team fights were like pretty hype to watch. So I was like actually just like pretty good series. I felt like. And then yeah, yeah. after playing our final, I felt like it was mega low quality. It was like <laughs> oh my god, it was like it's so disgusting. But now I was rewatching it with Duff earlier, like mm-hmm. in the past few days, and I do think that they they're not as to the good as I thought when I was watching like the finals live. I was mostly watching for entertainment. But uh, actually, looking at the gameplay, I don't think we're like far off. Okay. At all, I think we can for sure like win against all these teams. I think if anything, maybe BLG could be like scary. I think they play in two days, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing that one. I think BLG look pretty good. So yeah, but then again, yeah. I mean, I guess T1 usually at international tournaments is a bit scarier. So we'll see how they do, but I do think we have pretty good strategies prepared. Yeah, yeah. And also we're just smarter about how to play. I think we didn't really show that in the last two series, but I think in the first Fnatic series and Mad, I think we were playing a lot better in that regard. So, yeah, I think we're going to have a pretty good shot. I mean, honestly, it can't be worse than last year, that's for sure. And I think we're actually just like so much better that I might as well just win it. Okay. All right, that's pretty hype. I guess <laughs> as, as, as something that I've noticed, right, and something that I've like conceptualized because it's like all I do is fucking watch League all day is just <laughs> like the, the the main evolution that has occurred, and I noticed that in in you guys too. And it's like you see the evolutions, and then you try to take that away, and you try to show the players right that you're playing. 
seems like you guys are so much better individually to assess information real time and you guys seem to have such much better understanding of what it means to build vision around mid and what mm -hmm. it means to actually spotting the enemy jungle and support and how yeah. bbn caps actually need to interact with that because um that is true yeah. you guys are so sharp like whenever because especially like we like after like facing up against you guys it's like we we recognize it's like in 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 the movement when we were progging what with 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 our vi right and our soup into the right side we made sure that our nico could push deep then it was like controlled and then it's like one time we like moved to the wrong side for some fucking reason we walked into cannon side where you guys are full vision and then you clear all the vision caps pushes two waves deep and then all of a sudden we fucking lose yeah. lose our head and i think a lot of the teams in europe fucking fell for this shit right for sure yeah. i think that was one of the big things we also realized after worlds that all the Asian teams are just like the players are just way faster at reacting when about information. Yeah, yeah. That's also, also something we talked a lot about with Duff, and mm. he was very good at telling us in like reviews when we're supposed to make a decision. Like as soon as we get this information, we should already be thinking about this or how we should react. Oh, nice. And I think we're getting much better at that now. Yeah. So, but it also comes from just like playing a lot of solo queue or at least having valuable solo queue games, mm. so you can have faster reactions about anything that's happening in the map. So yeah, I can I can definitely see that we improved on that yeah compared to last year. Last year we were a bit AFK, especially me. I wanted to see you guys play regular games. At some point, you know, the, the vanity of uh, lane swaps it kind of wears out on you. It's like I'm watching. It's mm -hmm. like oh, G2 now. It's like oh, Varos base. It means they need to base and they are pushing. Yeah. And now they need to just uh, open up on the map where the Varos is not. And then they are yeah. Moving. We tried. <laughs> we tried playing normal in the final, but finally kept playing swapping top. <laughs> yes, it was, it was funny like. <laughs> That fucking game where you guys were doing the Scion swap, they just ended up on top side. <laughs> yeah. They were like mind gaming themselves too much. Yeah, they just tried to like uh, call your bluff, but uh, I guess uh, you guys were so, so, so deep. It was a master plan to <laughs> yeah. get in people's heads. It's... And then I'm like watching that game, you guys are bonking the turret uh, and yeah. racing with the right champs um, into a turret that doesn't have uh, the defense. It was, it was interesting. We're just very good at rock, paper, scissors. 100%. <laughs> no, it's, um, to work on that one. No, Billy Billy is... Uh, I'm excited for that because I feel like Billy Billy... They, they sometimes are a little bit messy in, 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 in the later stages, but how they execute with their jungle support AD in like the first like five minutes of the game, they are, they are fucking dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, your lane source strategy, I think, against T1 is going to be perfect because I, th I, I mm. think T1 is probably like it's, it's, the, ult the, it's, it's the ultimate counter to them because it's true. Yeah. It's like Korea wants to be like very eccentric. It's like they their claim to fame was ushering in this fucking whole Halo yeah, Blades yeah. meta, right? And they played Rumble and like this is where Korea is in his comfort. Uh, like uh, I think when when they need to work well together with jungle and support, I think this is where they are weaker. Uh, like when they're playing like the standard game with like Rakans and Nautilus, uh, uh, but if they have like uh, the, the liberty to to just squeeze from their lane and it means that they can secure both because they're pushing and it's not like 3v3 heavy, I think that uh, this is where they are uh, at their best. And then Zeus is a player that uh, grows silently and if you lane up against these guys, I think it's like the ultimate uh, <laughs> ultimate counter against them. So yeah. I'm, I'm excited for that. <laughs> Let's see if Rai does anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, the patch is already out. They can't do anything. Maybe they hotfix. I don't know. Hotfix? Nah, that would be fucked up, no? <laughs> I don't know. That can't happen to you, you twice. <laughs> yeah, that would be fucked up, yeah. yeah. It's uh, <laughs> it cool that, that it traveled, because like, Topis was also did it right, because uh, against yeah. JDG, but JDG also... They, like, LPO, yeah. they, they, they went fucking rumble top, and they had fucking Ash Kalista yeah. bot, so it was... It was uh, as a, as a shoe in mm. okay msi i'm i'm excited to, to do what you guys play same i i wanted to ask you as a final thing because now we we talk for two hours and uh, this is about you know the end like the time that we talked about before otherwise i can yeah. keep you forever um, <laughs> in in terms of uh, how you rate uh, like a big discussion that's going to come out come out of course is uh, like the lec all pro and um, I, I wanted to ask you if I put you in the position where you don't need to to put your own teammates, you can do that if you want to, whatever. Uh, how, how would you judge uh, your um, your peers uh, in 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 the league? Like if you if you would make 
an all pro team uh, like I'm, I'm i'm sure that you have opinions about players how how, how would it yeah. look like maybe we can stop in the super role like how do you how do you mm. view your opponents uh, currently in the league i mean i think probably the top two would be labro and yun i think okay they played pretty well throughout the whole split mm -hmm. i think yun was playing really well in the final as well he was the only one trying to actually win the game it looks like yeah, like yeah. he was actually finding some good shit also had pretty good champion pool i think um i think yeah labro was just like pretty consistent played a lot of rakan had some good engages but at yeah, least yeah. for me it felt harder to play against yun i think um and i think he was also smarter with how he plays towards like i remember i was watching back one game he was playing milio i was playing nautilus i think mm -hmm. that was i don't know when that was but yeah it was sometime this split or maybe last split um where he basically put wards down before we entered the area so i remember we were trying to like sneak an ash or something but he already warded that shit and then there was at some point i was just recalling on a ward that he put down like 30 seconds before because he just knew I'm gonna go walk into his bot side jungle and okay. put wards out in the base, and I was basically gonna ward. Oh, that was awkward. Okay, but he was basically just like pretty good. Maybe it was like random about how why he did it, but like it felt like after watching, I was like, wow, he actually just like predicted that I'm gonna be there, or like okay. what are we gonna do? Hmm. So that felt pretty interesting. Okay. Um. So yeah, I I would probably put Yoon as number one all pro. Mm -hmm. Then Eddie Carey. I'd probably put Ice, I think. I think he played the best. So let me think. It was Kazi as well? Ice, is what uh, has been Kazi. discussed? Well, Kazi was kind of good, yeah. Let me think. Yeah, I could, I could see Kazi as well, yeah. Mm. I feel like Kazi is maybe a bit more flexible as well with Champion Pool mm -hmm. compared to Ice. I think Ice, I can only remember him having very good games on like Zeri. Uh, I guess Varus, he was pretty decent. I like good at Felios games too, on occasion. I yeah. Mean, BDS yeah, kind of switched gear. It was kind of interesting because I, I saw Ice as like Ghost Light after uh, after Winter, where he was just playing like Jin, Ash, Varus. I guess, yeah. And then they just went completely the opposite direction in in, in this split. I was I was quite impressed with, with, with Ice uh, in, yeah. in, in that regard. I think... But I could definitely see a point for cards, yeah. I think they've been kind of playing well most of their games. Like they were winning 2v2s and stuff. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any big moments where I felt he inted. I guess not. Okay, Kazi, I, I yeah. appreciate Kazi additionally because I, I feel like Vitality, it seems like they are playing the oh. game in like 15 second segments. And mm. I feel like AD carries are the ones that suffer the most from that because. In most cases, they have very little agency, right? It's like you, you, you farm what you can and, and, and you fight in the fights that uh, people choose for you, right? Like yeah. Kazi maneuvering that situation, I, I, have, I have respect for that because uh, like Vitality, they, their gameplay was very, very unstructured. It's like they yeah. found themselves in situations and then like they played mechanically well and that's how they won games. Cause, cause yeah, that's true. It was like the the pulse it's if you felt like the heart rate of of how they wanted to play was like so spontaneous and sporadic and then it's like oh yeah. photon popped up Kazi popped up or Healy found some crazy engage and and they and they figured it out and it was very inconsistent like playing AD in such situations ugh, i i wouldn't uh, <laughs> i wouldn't want to <laughs> mid lane i guess caps is is the easy one but we we are excluding g2 players yeah anything that stands out to you in in, in mid or the other roles it was tough to get. No. Um, I'm not sure, actually. Everyone was pretty easy to gank. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's see. Let me think who brought the boys mid the most. <laughs> I mean, I think usually Humanoid is pretty good at... I mean, the boys... If he doesn't die to level 3 gank, then usually he's pretty good at bringing people mid as well to, like, yeah. match. And I think most of the time, he made, like pretty good place when you play against him like it feels like he has more pressure on the map or just like that he's smarter about moving around the map yeah yeah than, than other mids who else was there there was nuke uh there was zwayru there was Skawi, Piteo, Niski, the Skawi. yeah okay i think it's pretty clearly him an idea yeah, yeah. yeah and then jungle mm, i think probably razork for the majority of the split was pretty good yeah i think 
in our series maybe he wasn't playing the greatest. Yeah, yeah. But overall, he had a pretty good split, I would say. Agreed, agreed, yeah. I can't think of anyone else. I mean, usually Luea plays good, but then again, he did pick Rengar against us. That was a bit of grief. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Ivern. Um... Is there anyone else? Shio, no. Uh, Jungle was a bit yeah, of a weird was, one. I got uh, was a bit inconsistent, I feel like. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Yeah, I'll probably give it to Razor Kill. <laughs> and then top. Skorini was bad, I thought. Adam was not great, but at least he tried to expand his champion pool. Yeah, you. Yeah. Photon was the one that stood out the most. Oh, in Photon, my yeah. Mind. Actually, Photon was kind of smurfing. Yeah, that was an easy one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess Photon, Razor, Humanoid, Yoon, and Karzi. No okay, okay. cool. And you know, Mickey. Like solid roster. You know, Mika, I, I've been watching you play for a long time. You know, the, the, the split, sometimes there was some iffy moments, Mickey. What's what's going on with, been, with, uh... with Mickey? Is he going to bounce back as always? Do I need to be concerned? Or it's uh, no problem. I might. You might? I, mean, I think most of my in the games were like the Nautilus ones. Yeah, yeah. But I also think. People are kind of buying too much of the narratives because I don't think it's much different from last year. I think to what point in the game? Sorry, Mika. I, I think, think, I think year, you might have DC'd. I, I I missed half of the sentence and you are frozen. Can you out a bit or what? Hello. It's cutting out. Okay. Now Hello, now, now you're back. Now you're back. Can you can you start yeah. over for me, brother? Yeah. So basically. Okay. Now it froze again. I will wait. I felt like I was just playing like Mickey, Mickey, fine. wait, wait, wait! Fuck! <laughs> you did it again. Now, now you're back. Now you're back. Again, yeah, again, yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> Our internet is like so fucking bad. That's it. Anyway, I'll just uh, yeah, I'll just go again. Okay. Anyway, so I think a lot of the narr like a lot of the things, are narrative driven because I think last year I was not playing particularly well, but somehow the narrative was that I was really good. And I got MVP for it for some fucking reason. Okay. I don't think I did anything special. I was just playing some League of Legends. Like, uh, my KDAs looked good. I think the biggest difference, actually, people just look at KDAs. So my KDAs were good back then because I played Milio. I played, like, some range supports. I was sitting behind. We were winning. So if you win and you're playing range support, you're probably going to have a good KDA. You're just going around shielding people. I had one good play in that year where I kicked the Kai'Sa with my Milio Q. That was pretty hype. I have, I'm proud of that one. Yeah. But everything else, I was just like... I mean, I've, I. Oh no, you're lagging again, brother. There was nothing good about this. No, it's, I, I can speak because because I was writing you, writing was so you much right. better last year. Huh? Uh, sorry, it's 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 lagging. So I'm I'm trying yeah, to. Yeah. Uh, I I missed the 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 end. What were you saying in the end? Let me. Bro, what's happening with your network, man? It was working yeah, wait, so wait. well. Yeah, I'm going I'm going for Wi-Fi now. Give me a second. Okay. Okay. Let me see if that works better. Berlin Internet. Hello, hello, okay. Hello, hello. I'm on Wi-Fi now. Okay, Should okay. Be a bit more stable. So you're saying last year narrative, and this year as well. This year as well. Because this year the narrative is that I'm just like shit, which. I think narrative is based on the finals against Mad Lions, where I was went one and ten with Nautilus. I think in those scenarios, I agree. I should not go one and ten, right? Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of deaths were actually just like not worth for them to actually go for it. Mm -hmm. So my KDA did look bad, but they were also just trolling by going for it because I don't know. They were just like after I died, I'm just looking at sidelines and just like dropping like I don't know two three waves, just like dying to tower. They're like not even starting Nash from it. Their top lane just moved to like to our red side, top side jungle, mm -hmm. just to kill me. Nice, you got 50 gold. Worth. Like if they would get Nash from it at least, maybe it's worth, you know. But mm -hmm. they got 50 gold, I guess, and got some visionary jungle. And then, I mean, they did play pretty bad in that game specifically, or that final, I guess. But I think throughout the rest of the split, I don't think I've had many bad games. I remember I was going through my gold GG, I'm thinking about the games. Mm -hmm. I don't think they were like that int, but my KDAs did look int. So I think it's mostly just KDA difference from this split to last year. Okay. Because yeah, I don't think I played much better last year either, you know? Like, maybe it looked different because we were like winning a lot more. Actually, we're kind of winning a lot now. 
maybe it was the champs I was playing. I don't fucking know. Anyway, I don't feel like it's much of a difference. Um, I mean, I did into the finals where like I was dying a lot, and then for this this finals, or no, I guess BDS series when I was playing Nautilus again. Yeah, that one I was dying a lot as well. Mm -hmm. But I do think most of my deaths were just like from team fights where mm -hmm. I think we just had like we're not on the same page because like a lot of times I got hook and Lucian, but he didn't die. Then I died. Sucks. Another death to the board. <laughs> I guess the, the the int part was I guess we didn't get push level one uh, with Jinx not to lose against Lucian Nami. So that 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 way, if people actually knew how the matchup should go, they could say, oh, they're inting. They're like playing bad. And then there was something else I fucked up that game. Uh, actually, a lot of times I'm greedy with my flash, where I don't flash and shit. But yeah, I think most of the time, I mean, most of the most of the flame started in the finals against Mad Lions, mm -hmm. and then people just kind of keep writing it because it's like the narrative. So like, it's fine. So I, it's, I, I, I could give you my perspective, right? I, I think sure. maybe, maybe it's by virtue of of how you guys played last year, but I think that something that you do better than anybody else, I think, is it's like. When you guys are winning both, I think that how you translate that, you do better than anybody else. I think especially last year, there were many moments where it's like uh, how how you found value on the map. I think that uh, there was a lot of cases where you get like ganked up. There was like the game, I remember uh, like a specific one that comes to mind. It's like um, there was a game where um, like Capsulane cleared into Casio. You guys killed both. It was like the game where... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I think um, you lane against. Javan or what? I, th I think it might have been like the, the the Javan game where the enemy like kind of ran it down. Of Varus Brom, like I don't know what the yeah. fuck they were doing in the lane phase. Like they they yeah. just sacked everything. I I don't know what the fuck happened there. Uh, nevertheless, it's like how you uh, when when you were ahead or when you guys were were winning. I think that it was so decisive in how it impacted the game, and I think that I um, especially. I think this year, I guess Caps has had like really, really fucking good performances throughout winter and spring. And I remember in 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 last year, I think that Caps was a little bit up and down in in, in the earlier splits. And I think that, yeah, at least in my mind, I think you covered for a lot of that. You know, I think that um, uh, maybe I think that your teammates were allowed a little bit more mistakes in the early just because of how dominant you guys were bot because you could fix like almost anything you know i remember yeah. times you went top level three you fixed the lane you went to the mid level three you fixed the lane and you were just so fucking impactful you know it's like when mm -hmm. you guys were ahead bot it was such a clear signal as to you guys winning the game right maybe yeah. it's just by virtue of opportunity because like circumstances is a real thing right it's like like genji against how alive chovi smurfed out of his mind and he, he carried those games, but there was also like an opportunity needs to appear where that's necessary for it to happen, you know? Um, and, and maybe through virtue of how you guys are approaching the game and how you feel in regards to how you guys uh, view the macro and how that's different that you feel on a personal note that in terms of the elevation there, it's um, quite the same or maybe even better yeah. on your side. I mean, I mean, I feel like last year, I was kind of doing things not as uh, consciously, or just like the the way that I was moving on the map didn't have that much thought process behind it. Yeah, a lot of yeah. times I was just out, auto piloting mm -hmm. and just like going through mid every time, you know, just like fucking go through mid. I have nothing else to do. But now I feel like I'm usually at the right place at the right time, and I'm better at reading what any team is gonna do and where I need to be in response. Yeah, yeah, and then. Yeah, but I do remember, I mean, I guess individually, I do remember having a very fucking disgusting Lulu game in the finals versus Fnatic now. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think that was probably the worst game I've ever played in my entire life. That was okay. actually disturbing. So in that sense, I can see, I can see it. Okay. But then I'm like scrolling through my gold GG a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking of that Nautilus game versus BDS. It was like, it was bad, you know, I went 0-9. But in the game, I don't think... Most of my deaths were like int, maybe like one or two were int, but like that's just kind of how it goes on support. And then I had one rail game versus rogue that I was inting. And I think besides that, most of my games, this split at least, were just like fine, if not like 
good. Like I think the Rata game versus Heretics, I was I played pretty well, even though I was a one three six. Then what else did I? Play? Yeah, I think I think the rest of the games I was just playing like fine, you know, like nothing special against I guess K Corp. I guess I was playing Rakan. That game I was kind of like not the greatest, but it was still, you know, I didn't feel like it was anything different than how I would have played it like last year, you know. Like yeah. I was yeah. Just chilling. No, I I, but, I, I, uh, I can see yeah. that uh, from, from from your side. I I, I think sometimes. Also, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I think a big reason of why people gave me MVP for last year was because uh, my teammates were inting more than I was inting. So then it's like, who else do you give it to? The team won, like our team won everything. But like, for example, BB was inting like, I don't know, it started a year at some point. People were always flaming BB. Yeah, yeah. Then Caps also had a shit split, so they're perma flaming him. Uh... I guess people don't usually usually give it to Ru the rookie, so yeah, I couldn't get it because the rookie is never get MVP. He already got rookie with the split, like he has had enough. Yeah, yeah. And then for Hans, yeah, actually, I don't know if Hans didn't get it. I'll probably give it to Hans if it was if I was to choose. Okay. But I don't know. People just don't like him for some fucking reason. I guess for Team Liquid fans don't like him. <laughs> so yeah, but I didn't think it was like yeah anything in particular that was different. Okay. No, as as I mentioned so, yeah. from, from my side, because I was writing you, you're gonna get MVP. Yeah, for me it was super super clear. But I think yeah. it's always a question of um of like impact. And I think the the circumstance of the team last year allowed you to have more impact because of how you guys approached the game, right? It's like you yeah. guys wanted to win bots and it gave you agency, right? And yeah. uh, for example now the lane swap games are happening and I think it's um harder to take away like what people do well because i think maybe if anything that stands out is that in, in in the process of you guys trying to of course reinvent yourself and becoming better than you were last year you have to of course let go of some things right and um, i think that uh, there were definitely games where from my side why i asked you this question was not because of the narrative it was more on my end where i've noticed like in lane I, c I can't draw from some, some specific examples, but I, rem I remember there was like imprecisions when it came to like lane phase. Mm. And I think there was like I imprecisions guess. in terms of how you guys 3v3. Because this is something that you guys were very good at uh, last year. But at the same yeah. time, you guys drafted specifically for that. And for example, this year, there was like games where you like, there was like that Ivan game. There was like a... Ivan like, Karma. Ivan Kama, Smolder. Smolder. There was like the yeah. you guys. There was, I remember I was, there was like a rail game, yeah. right? There was a rail game where you guys like contested river when it didn't make sense, trying to invade Gromp, and enemy mid lane hmm. just came and killed you guys. I think in the yeah. most recent series, the Lions, yeah. there was like moments where you didn't flash, right? So that those are the things that yeah. maybe like stand out, right? And it's just yeah. in the end, it's like the game. We only get to see the game. And uh, I, guess, yeah. I wanted to defend my side because it's not driven by narrative, you know. This is just I get yeah, to judge yeah. the games for what they are, and uh, uh, this is what we what we take away from. But uh, of course, it doesn't come from a position of concern because I know yeah, how good yeah. you are. I you mean, know? I think that's fair enough. But I'm saying that I had like same games, like I still had in the games like last year, mm -hmm. but people didn't really seem to care about them. Like I'm just like looking a little bit back the other year, for example, mm -hmm. this one game versus XL. I went zero seven six on Brom. That game was fucking disgusting, what I was doing. But, like, I guess people didn't really care that much. There was one... Actually, I guess this is Genji. Okay, sucks. We into that one. Mm. Uh, oh, the Jarvan game versus Rogue versus Koi, where I blind picked Jarvan because oh, yeah. no one played Thresh. No one played Thresh. And then Drew picked Thresh. And I was, like, missing every E possible, yeah, like, yeah. in lane. Because, like, the one thing which you need to do with Jarvan support is you need to land your E, and it's impossible to miss. Yeah, yeah. I think I missed, like, three or four in a row, and I was cringing so fucking hard. That was a pretty Actually, disgusting game, was, yeah. That game was, like, <laughs> fucking disturbing, game. yeah. <laughs> Something about Rogue, was, huh? Yeah, and then... Fucking... Actually, yeah, it's always fucking Rogue. <laughs> yeah, just looking back, I had, I had a Talia support game, where I was completely running it. Mm -hmm. I had a Nami game versus... Oh, my God. I feel like I actually had more shit games in last year than this year, but I guess this year is still a long way to go, so maybe I'll have more in the future. <laughs> but just looking at this match history, yeah, I don't know how this guy got MVP, but, you know, hopefully I, I get it this year as well. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, no, it's, joking. it's like the, the MVP or like all pro conversation is always a little bit weird because it's not a question of like who is the best player. Because it's like, yeah. like if I'm building a team tomorrow, I'm I'm choosing you as a support. And yeah. like a Caps could run it down the whole split and he could have only shit <laughs> games. And I would, 
for, he could do it for it's three true, splits yeah. and I would still want him as my mid laner yeah, if I'm building a that's team. Fair right? enough, yeah. So it's like a very that's difficult true. Sometimes it's like circumstance doesn't allow you to to do more, right? It's like a good example is Milky Way. It's like my, if I'm building a roster tomorrow, it's like even in yeah. that in LPO, it was like Kanavi was completely fucking smurfing. There was like other junglers doing really, really well. But Milky Way circumstance was there were certain game positions where he needed to play just right and sometimes you need a little bit of int from your teammates in order to have an opportunity to maybe do more. Because if you're playing well, maybe you get away with doing less. And uh, I guess in, yeah. in in the process of you guys evolving, it's like uh, you are doing more, but at the same time less in a way. Because you guys are not just fucking driving the game through bot and then invading and fucking exploding the game, right? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. But you feel good in that uh, transition? Hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't say I feel good, but uh, <laughs> you want like to win. No, you want to win. Of course, it's like you feel good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could be, could be worse. That's okay. that's my my motto. <laughs> so how many weeks of practice you guys have now for MSI? Uh, so we have four more days off, and then we go there and we play, we practice. Okay, so it's like um, you get to watch play, and so you have like two and a half, three weeks. Ish. Something like that, yeah. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll be watching. I'll be watching. Nice. I uh, I'm scared for you guys, but I think the the, the lane swap tool and how you guys <laughs> have progressed macro wise uh, gives me hope. You know, more hope than than the previous year. That's for sure. Same. That's for sure. <laughs> I think that if uh, if you guys are capable of dancing there, you know, um, it's um, definitely a, a step up. I'm I'm excited. Yeah. But you guys are in such a tough position. But I appreciate what you guys uh, have been doing and uh, what you continue to do. Because like every, all these teams, they come from regions where they have resistance on this. You know, it's like yeah, that's true. You guys could have uh, gotten away with not uh, uh, building your macro further and still probably win the split, right? It's like you could have played the same way and still maybe won the split. And like a lot of the other teams have some fucking serious uh, catching up to do, right? You guys are in a yep. tough, tough situation. <laughs> okay. Mickey, Fine. is there anything else that uh, you want to bring up? Something mm. on your mind? Not really. I need to take a piss. Yeah, That's on my mind. I need to take a piss too. <laughs> I like that you back up your boy Hans Sama, you know? <laughs> of course. Yeah. I think, uh, <laughs> I think uh, as well, you know, obviously he's, he's, he's fucking good. But to me, some of the other ladies stood up. But I think... I, I began to appreciate that you have an AD that fucking pull, pulls bands every game and fucking yeah. is capable of playing everything else too, right? It's like you guys had yeah. your Senna games and, and um, you guys That's seem nice. to be a duo that uh, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, make it. Then yeah. both of us should go to the bathroom. I think mm. uh, that's, that. that's a good point to end it. Thank you very much, <laughs> Mickey. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, I'll be you. watching with great intent and I'm excited to see you guys uh, pop off. Uh, maybe uh, we do this again when after you've uh, hoisted the MSI trophy uh, for the second <laughs> sure, time. <I'm> done. <laughs> yeah, I need to look up that book that you mentioned. I'm still, I'm still in yeah, shock yeah. about this man. <laughs> Brady, pain free for life. That okay, one. I'm excited. Okay, all the best, Mickey. Thank you for taking the time. Yeah. All right. Bye bye. You too. All right. See ya.